And we're live. <laughs> I really got to fix the code that does the countdown. I was just, I was waiting. I was just ready to go. Then I finally looked down. That's when the camera comes on. We're live from Game of Chance. Named by Muffin. This is a nice show of the Deviated September Tour. Named by Doug. Hey, a bodybuilder to be strong neck. Brother Mooch. I'm only big child. Muffin's here. Amp Mods, twice vaccinated mole, Mr. Robert Jazzy, Beauty Mangos, Doug Days of Autumn, Neighborhood Watch, Using McName, and GD Bill and Milewitch. All thanks for the seven months, Jazzy. How's everyone doing on this? Oh, it's, it's Saturday. Saturday. I had to watch some of the one of the two of the VODs just a little bit I was trying to find when I had said something for reasons that I'll talk about in a couple of weeks maybe um, I just couldn't remember what when something had happened that I talked about anyway um, I played it at three I talk really slow <laughs> I, I had I was listening at three times speed. That's the only way I could stay sane. How do y'all put up with the slow my slow speech? I gotta work on this. I gotta talk faster. How do you learn how to talk faster? I guess it's not so much the mouth, it's the brain it has to move faster, right? <laughs> Jazz is one kid we multitask. Mr. Roberts says, I watch it three times speed. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jazz, if you want to learn to talk fast, move to Chicago, we'll teach you. <laughs> Big Charles says, please don't talk fast from a slow person. Uh, Mr. Roberts says, you already started the first song. Uh, Media says, a buddy called me up around 6 and was like, want to watch Dune? I'm in a cinema and it looks like it's just me and another guy. <laughs> so we watched Dune with five of the people. It was epic. You liked it? Yeah, I, I would like to see that. I would like to see that. You know what I'm interested in too is uh, Foundation. They're going to do the Foundation, on, uh, Isaac Asimov's Foundation on, what, on Apple or something. I read those in high school. Did anyone read Foundation? Know what I'm talking about? So I'm curious. I, it's my memory of it. I, I'm sort of in a hard time seeing how it's going to be converted to this, you know, to television. But I guess we'll find out. Oh, I still haven't, you know what, Media, I still haven't watched The Dark Materials. Is, did it, was it successful enough? Or did they renew it? Are they going to do all the books or did it not do well enough? Most of the try to read Foundation books couldn't get into them. Yeah, I seem to remember they're pretty dry. I, I liked Asimov a lot in high school. I read his, I read both volumes of his autobiography, which is like, 2,000 pages or something. But I tried to read some Asimov a few years ago and I just couldn't, I just, the right, I'm not real impressed with his, uh, his, I mean his idea, he has awesome ideas, but the writing itself, I just couldn't get into it. Mo, you like the robot story, Asimov's robot stories? I, I think I read at least one of those. I, I don't remember that as well as Foundation. I mean, does Zell make the final book as well? It was received very well, especially season two. Mo, enjoy Clark and Highland more.
Great new song. Oh, mileage, thank you so much. A huge donation from mileage. Wow, thank you so much. Takes us to our, our day reward and past that. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, honor for mileage. Thank you, thank you. Oh, and, and also a thank you to use McName for a 15 month sub. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Mileage. Thank you. You said something you said yesterday puzzled me. You said I should do more chord changes to be more poppy, I think. But don't pop songs never have changed change chords? What does it mean? Should I do chord changes? To I mean, I was, I was, I was more referenced that the, the kind of chord progression I was doing was sort of a, um, I mean, it really depends on the pop, right? I mean, pop is becoming more and more um, modal. But, um, but and less songy, right? Pop is becoming more hooky and less songy, and I, I mean that's to me. There's no there's no judgment there. It's just it's just sort of what's happening. I mean I you know I come from funk, so I love hook. I love rhythm. I also love song. Um, but but yeah, if you want sort of songy, singable pop, I think it's a little easier with chord progressions because chord progressions have a momentum to your melody um, that can be more singable. Uh, it sort of forces you to come up with melodies that, that I mean, you know, like modal stuff. You know, I, I definitely find myself doing lots of just going around the third, the one, and the seven. Uh, it just sort of lends itself to that kind of, you know, if meaning um, there's the one, there's the seven, there's the third, minor third. It's very easy to just spend your life right there, those three notes, and maybe the fifth sometimes. Even if it's major, those exact same notes. The flat three. But I think I was responding more that, that just the nature of what I did on that that track that people commented on is I you know I did a four chord progression and I sang a melody over that four chord progression if I remember right or did I sing the melody over a, a modal part but I do I do think that chords lend themselves it's a little more easier to come up with melodies that are singable I think it's harder to come up with super hooky things over chord changes. I think it's a little harder in the modern sense of hook. A little harder. But melody, I think, is easier. Because hook, hook and melody can be the same thing, but also might not be.
I go through phases on the show where I'll do more chords and then sometimes I, you know, I'll be more modal. It's, it's looping lends itself to being more modal. Um, because when you create a chord progression, you're sort of, unless you're going to start doing pedal and suspension things, well, what I mean by that is unless you're going to have um, one line repeating itself while the chords change, right? If you're not going to do that, if you want everything to be going with the movement of the chords, if your chords are two measures long, eight beats, or 64 measures, right? Then every single loop you record has to be the same length so that they match up with the chords, right? So... Because of that, it means it takes a lot longer to build up your loops because every single instrument, you have to record the exact same length of time. If I'm playing modally, and I'm just in D minor, I could have one of my loops be four measures. I could have another loop be one measure, and another loop be three measures. And no matter, even though they're different lengths, they all work together because the chords aren't changing. So that's why I tend, to, I tend to do more modal stuff on this show. It, just, just, just for experience, it's, it's, I mean, it's not, I don't think about it. It's just sort of, I think it just is what, it's just sort of expediency. I mean, and, and another thing, or another reason, <laughs> another reason is that I often don't know what the sound is when I start the song. I can't remember what kind of sound it is. And um, and if it's some crazy sound, I can't play chords with the crazy sound. <laughs> it's just, there's You can't. So I just, right off the bat, I establish more of a modal thing. But chords are, I love chords. I love chord changes. I, sh I need to do them more because they are, it's a, I love I love how they, like I said, how they provide, um, they sort of provide a roadmap for a melody. You're still improvising, but there's this, there's this kind of roadmap that takes you uh, in places you might not go just naturally. Oh, if you just got gifted a sound, use a McName, I'll play it. I'm gonna play the sounds that were just gifted. Yeah. They won't be on the they won't be on the page until they they get um they get uh approved and then unfortunately a lot of these new sounds I haven't um I haven't recorded demos for them. So if you try to play them they're silent. Myself four years ago would be horrified that I have sounds that are not that they don't work on that page. Just horrified, horrified that I could let something be so unprofessional. But you know, as you get older, you you learn to accept that. Uh, <laughs> Not everything is going to work all the time. Let's see. This is a lot quick. This is a drawing analogy, which I do more for myself. Modal plane is like penciling and rendering with pencil only, so it's all about the tone. But harmony is like slapping ink on that pencil to solidify the shapes and structures. I think, you know, modal, I think, especially lends itself to rhythm and, and you know, funk. Funk tends not to have a lot of chord changes. I mean, if you listen to classic James Brown, there's almost no chord changes. So, I mean, sometimes the entire song will be in D, and then maybe they'll have a bridge and they'll go to F or something, and then it's back to D. Um, the most sly in this family stone is not going to have a lot of chord changes. You do have more poppy funk sometimes, like Earth, Wind, and Fire. And that's where you see more, they do a lot more chord changes often. But some of their funkiest tracks, no chord changes. 
Or if you think about superstition by Stevie Wonder, I, if I'm, you know, are there any, I don't think, is it just E the whole time pretty much? Um, that's not, again, it's not to say that you can't have funky stuff or amazing rhythm with chord changes. You absolutely can. Um, but I, you know, sort of going back, I think, uh, it's going back to my analogy of, of a theater and actors in a scene and and uh, it's difficult if every aspect of the music is at a hundred you know it every, if every instrument is, is at a hundred and going a hundred miles an hour and you've crazy harmony you got crazy rhythm it can work but sometimes you've just it's just it's like you're being assaulted <laughs> by the music there's nowhere to breathe, or there's no space. And, you know, if you listen to most jazz, it's extraordinarily harmonically complex and rhythmically complex. Yet, you look at the bass player in most straight ahead jazz, and the bass player is just playing quarter notes the whole time. Dun 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 dun. All right, the bass is this solid rock that everything else can sort of be in just all over the place. And the drummer too tends to be, for the most part, with their right hand and with the the, the pedal on the, the hi hat, tend to be doing something very steady. Where they're doing something different tends to be with that snare. Again, there's plenty of exceptions to that, but. Um, now, I also love avant-garde free jazz where everybody's going 100 miles an hour sometimes and it's amazing, you know, and screaming and having, you know, whatever through their instruments. But I think it's harder to pull that off. Let's see, sounds. EQF. And I enjoy... I enjoy playing free jazz, if I'm being honest, more than I enjoy listening to. I do enjoy listening to it, especially live, but I much much more meaningful for me to play it. Okay, here's EQF for using McName for mileage. Well, there's that one guttural sound I wasn't expecting. LGG for Mr. Robert. Oh, there might be some percussion. There might be some drum kits mixed into the sounds right now, I realize. That's, that's sort of a drum kit. And then that's LGG for Mr. Robert, then we got EHI for Mole. It's sort of like driving, I enjoy driving more than watch people do apps on a circuit. I don't like either. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's a good, that is a good amount, yeah. Oh, that's a cool sound. I don't, the, the categories, they, the logic assigned to this, I mean, this is, it's assigned as a texture, but what would I assign it to? I would probably put it in synth miss. Maybe a pad. I mean, it's actually listed as a pad, but it's the texture category. That's a, that's a really cool sound. Mileage got OJI.
All these sounds are cool. Miss Robert named sound lacking gigantic geese. Oh, and Mywitch gifted to watch LRF. Sorry. That's a drum kit. That sound is a drum kit. Oh, I'm going to recategorize it as, as a drum kit. And I'm going to, I don't want drum kits being unlocked. <laughs> but you get that one. I'm not going to take it away from you. Um, Omit sounds like Cardi's name. Okay. New record. Omit set field. Sound sound categories name. Okay, if it has drum in it. Or if it has percussion. Hopefully that works. We'll find out if I did that right. I'm not going to check. I'm just going to assume I did it right. That's a big mistake. Okay. Doug named the sound Doug is ice cream. Oh, hey, the funk. And Tundabrisky Botsky. Fade out. It's already faded out, right? Oh, reward, right? I forgot. Thank you, Doug. Movies. If you want a movie, run the reward command. Drum kit is jazz kit. Oakland from Doug Day's Asylum.
Oh yeah, those don't work there anyway. This is our first beat. And then mole. Beats. Check out our sounds. Beat Mango's dat bass. And we got Afro Cuban piano from Music McName. That sounds like noisy smooth. Then we got rem Remy Zomatosis. That's a debut. Paradise and Hell. And that's also a debut. And then, any movie would be neato if you could cast Danny DeVito. <laughs> cast DeVito. Now let's see if this piano is finally loaded. No. What are you... What are you doing? Oh, now you have an air? Oh, now you're going to do it. Y'all pick which sound starts the improv. Can we do one of those Cordy songs? Uh, maybe. We'll see. See what, uh... Probably not if we start with Paradise in Hell. <laughs> Here, I'll play uh, the chord changes for, uh... Is this Chopsticks? I just hear melodies all over the place and through those chords. Here's Mary Had a Little Lamb. <laughs> Is Brucos here? I'm watching the sound LRF. How oh, is is here. I just saw references and then there, oh yeah. Hope you're having a good weekend, Brucos.
One thing you'll notice is a lot of songs I start with just essentially a whole note. A whole note or a half note, you know, because I don't know, remember what the sound is. So I can't exactly just play a chord or play a rhythm because I don't know if the sound will play a rhythm. <laughs> so I just, I just do that essentially. Oh, that's what it is. That's right. Now I remember what it is. Look behind the curtain. <laughs> if you don't know what the sound is, just play one note. You can work with whatever happens. Whatever happens, I can make it work. Okay, let me read some. Oh, it's in this poll first. Doug, did you always play the same note? No, because I play whatever the key, you know, whatever the starting key is, I'll play um, somewhere in there. Not necessarily the root, so, but probably a note that's in the chord. Send this bow. Mole's drum loop. Okay, let's read these rewards. This is called me crazy with listening to sound for you play is not an idea. Well, technically, I have heard it already. Right? I just heard all those sounds. But the problem is I forget what they sound like. And I have no way, no easy way to play the sound without y'all hearing it too. I don't realize I've forgotten until I'm just to have to play. And then I see always oh, remixomotosis. What in what is that? You know, or Paradise in Hell. How am I supposed to remember? What, what is that? Now, dat bass, it's probably a bass sound. Afro piano group, you know, that makes sense. <laughs> um, it happens so often, I can't, I have no idea what the sound is. Muses, their sounds are not descriptive. No. <laughs> well, I have a cheat because. Um, if, this is going to be very small on screen, but uh, if you see up there, up top, if you can read that, it says B colon, that bass, K colon, Afro-Cuban piano, uh, SP colon, TX colon. So that tells me the category. But especially with textures and pads, you, I don't, you don't know what it, you know, that they're so varied. Uchimas is Paradise and Hell are both towns in Michigan, but they're opposite sides of the state. Doug's is, okay, this is Doug's uh, movie roar. Have you seen Noogie Luxembourgi? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Hugh Grant's best work yet. They play Rivali Butterbrot, a delicious centaur <laughs> whose goal in life is to agree as far away as possible. Muty Mango's got with the Rotten Tomatoes critic rated of 94% fresh. The problem is I have a left and a right knob. <laughs> it's the latest film by Dan Stanley Kubrick. When a rainbow retail buyer is murdered, an occupational analyst played by Wilford Brimley, who is a close friend of the victim, starts hurtling down the gang, hunting down the gang of job analysts responsible. Jazzy got a magnificent box office success. I just talk. A rivalry between Jello Monster loving eccentrics takes a broken turn when Bojack Billington, a handcrafted Jello Monster Zubas, played by Natalie Portman, is caught in a plot to Julianne his nemesis. Jello, <laughs> Jello Monster writes activist for adventure. I wasn't paying attention the first time it said it was a Jello Monster loving eccentric. 
Muffin Guy Corpse Inside Scarlet Armchair is another hot dog scented movie from Jean Luc Godard. When Yoga Ball Smudge with Gallery is launched, robbed of a graffiti of a periwinkle rabbit, your antenna were 6,000. Reginald Blank, played by Gary Oldman, is falsely accused of the crime. How will they prove their innocence? Muffin, uh, Mr. Robert got loser of four Academy Awards. I didn't even get the ring this time. Tells the story of a college university professor played by Julia Roberts, who drags their family from Louisiana to o Omaha, where they must whip googly eyes for the Jar of Pickles Cadwallader Mafia. Twice vaccinated mole got winner of 10 Academy Awards, I'm usually done by now, begins with Clarabo Caterpillar, played by a delicious Drew Barrymore, learning that they've just inherited Styween Limited, a manufacturer of gemstones from their late love. Clarabo has handcrafted changes planned. Botsky got a winner of the 1988 Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. Shield Concerting Tinderbox Returns chronicles the real-life rivalry between ladybug-loving eccentrics. Uh oh we got a similar one. Things take an annoying turn when Mango Mangrove... <laughs> actually works pretty well together, Mango Mangrove. And then a normal salad-scented ladybug Zubaz, played by Benicio Del Toro, has gotten a plot to resurrect their nemesis, ladybug rights activist Skinu Totally, played by David Hasloff. Brother Booch got with the Rotten Tomatoes critic rating of 70% rotten. This octopus is up there. Nobody knows why it's there. <laughs> Tells the story of a 96-foot 90 avocado that escapes from a jet boat in Maldives at the same time Paul Giamatti is doing some break dancing. <laughs> Chaos ensues when the avocado kidnaps John and rampages through Maldives. Mileage got to imagine a fusion of Groundhog Day and Annie Hall. I forgot it was it was stuck at the end. It features Martha Stewart playing the role of Zeddy Phineas. Zeddy tries to sell off their highly profitable Sid Empire in Mars. Highlight of the film is Martha singing Snow Globe Beside Roadkill. <laughs> Snow Globe Beside Roadkill while being chased by a crew of black market Sid Dior's. Oh, that reminds me. I had this idea long ago. Remember when, we, when I, we first were doing band unlocks? I was thinking about... um actually recording having to record 30 second snippets maybe i'll do that for the youtube that might be a fun thing to do every once in a while is have to be generate a description of a band and i have to create the music for it i was also thinking i was also thinking uh, with the the youtube show since i'll be it's you know the the, the concept is variety uh travel vlog meets variety show so there'll be musical guests they'll almost always be me <laughs> but but I was thinking it might be fun to have different band names and maybe have chat come up with band names and vote on different band names so you know so it's not this this is not always ETC kid <laughs> I mean it, it will be but it won't be you know although maybe it'll inspire me to get special outfits and I'll do, I'll do, uh, you know, I'll do compositing where it looks like there's three of me playing at the same time with matching mullets or something. Um, Music McName got the long-awaited sequel to The Good, The Bad. Oh, I gotta hurry. I gotta, I gotta be ready. The long-awaited sequel to The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Goblin Diggin' Agrarian, the sequel, tells the story of a legendary interior designer played by Howie Berry and a model maker played by Harvey Keitel who compete against each other in an increasingly high-stakes Sun Salutations tournament in Winnipeg. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. Gotta beat the hour. Can't look at chat. Gotta beat the hour. Time to accelerate.
keep sending me where I really don't want to go. Oh, he, oh, oh, these winds they blow. Why do they always send me where I really don't want to go? Go, go, go. Thanks for those calps. <laughs> Let's see, titles. Titles, what we get? I welcome Mr. Moon42 with Sea Breeze. Mileage too far to see. Twice vaccinated, more winds and wanderings. And one more. One more. Miss Robert Dance of the Midnight Jellyfish. And I used a title as a lyric. Mucho mas heave ho, the winds do blow. Why do they always send me where I really don't want to go? Well, I added that part. <laughs> I'll miss you at the googly eyes, Mr. Moon. I found that just you can throw googly eyes and anything in it that makes it awesome. <laughs> oh no, you, Otto lost its eye again. Miss Marie, you have some on your TV? Okay, let's get these titles, let's get these titles up on the board. Okay, we had flute, melodica, trumpet, sax, voice. Miley's name to sound, only jam band instrumental.
He says, you did the chord thing too? Yeah, sort of. I mean, the chords I did, in a way, it was still more of a vamp kind of feel. But there were, I mean, I did, this This was just G minor to D7. And then the uh, second section was A to G to F7 to E7. But you could basically play A pentatonic over it. I'll welcome, also welcome to Elijah that they hate him. <laughs> Don't vamp all the chords. Yeah, if you if you know anyone's not familiar with the term, a vamp is a repeated sort of a short little thing that you just repeat over and over again. A short, uh, usually it's sort of the groove. I don't know that you hear it that much anymore. It might, it's more of a jazz. I like guess, I don't know. I'm trying to think if I've ever heard it in the context of rock music. You're here to vibe. That sounds good, Mr. Moon. Muses don't chord changes, all, all men. Well, let me shout out a few more titles. I'm Only Big Child, Eating Through the, the Dessert, Three Muffin Love 91, Cowbells of Saskatchewan. Jazzy with Please don't take pity on me. I'll be a good lyric too. Please don't take pity on me. Though the winds may blow me where I don't want to be, please don't take pity on me. <laughs> My brother, brother, brother Mooch, dance macaron, mini mangoes, glass combustion, Doug Day's bottom, listen for the siren. Myla Gerald Gill, Twice Facts and More, We Are the Vampians. <laughs> the Vampians. <laughs> Media says, Please don't take pity on me, it's just a raisin and not the end of me. <laughs> no, it's please don't take pity on me, even though it's a raisin and will be the end of me. Don't take pity on me. Is Auto Mod being overly aggressive today? <laughs> I know I'm going to regret approving that. <laughs> it's gonna come back to come back to haunt us. My witch is there was a raisin I could not see. Please don't take pity on me. Please don't blame me for the raisins that it cost your palate. I know it feels like a ship that's run aground in the shallows. Not quite. That rhyme didn't quite get there. Palate in shallows? Eh, not, not, not really. Um, Brugus, you probably don't like the ones I committed earlier. <laughs> Mr. Moon says, what's your favorite instrument? I'll give you two answers. Two answers. My favorite instrument really is whatever I'm playing at the moment. Um, 
But, um... In the abstract, I'd say singing is my favorite. I mean, if that qualifies as an instrument. But my, fa my favorite instruments to listen to? Probably, you know, voice, saxophone, trumpet, and guitar. Probably my favorite melodic things. Whoops. It's gonna be a weird track. This next one. Mr. Moon, do you play do you play any instruments? Or do you have any favorite favorite ones to listen to? in this bow because I think I love harp the most but it's so hard to add a harp without it being the lead in anything you mean you mean a uh, harmonica or or uh, angels harp and it's mole mole is named winds and wandering angels harp Mr. Mr. Moon for to piano. First request ever coming up for Elijah the Hatem and Mr. Moon. They're both getting drum fills and drum loops on this track. drum kids thunder at the gates no it's not not loaded yet to be oh why do you do, why do you do it like that that's weird okay Is there a funky drum loop or drum fill in here? No? But you know, I think well, I was talking about favorite instrument. One, I generally do not listen to almost any music where there's only one instrument. I generally don't find that very compelling. I, I love hearing multiple instruments together. It's sonically, it's just, just the possibilities, you know, when you are mixing sounds. And I include voice in that. I mean, meaning I'm saying like, to you know, voice and guitar is essentially one thing. Voice and piano is essentially one thing in the way it usually functions. 
So I don't listen to a lot of just solo, you know, just voice and guitar, voice and piano. There's some I like. I like Nick Drake. Does anyone, anyone listen to Nick Drake? I mean, sometimes I think he had sort of, they probably had, he probably, there were probably other instruments playing sometimes. Some of his stuff, but. Pink Moon, yeah. Bosky says Pink Moon's such a good album. Yeah, that's the one, I, that's the one I've listened to, right, the most. Me, you're kind of the opposite, you have a soul instrument sonic experience. But for an entire, like an entire album, I, I like it when it's a breakdown. <laughs> I nearly died just now. A breakdown. Like I do sometimes, you know, sometimes I'll take out all the music and I'll just play it. I don't do it very often. But I like that. But I think I'd say in a song, I generally, within a song, I, I like hearing multiple instruments. More like soul bagpipes. Thunder at the gates. How does this thing work again? Yeah, oh, that's right. Okay. First up, we got a beat for... Elijah the hate hate mo a steady hi-hat pattern. But I'm going to leave the kick and snare how it is. Hey, Brother Boat! Brother Boat's here. 48 months sub. Thanks, Brother Boat. How are you doing? How, how's your family and everything? It's good to see you. Brother Bo, have you heard? Have you heard the big plans? I can't remember when I last saw you. My big plans. I'm coming to Montana, in a van. <laughs> I've done the train thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come to do a van. Yeah, I'm taking the show, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm taking the show into a van, beginning sometime next year, early next year. Okay, there's Elijah. We're going to have a big, huge party show in December sometime, celebrating five years on Twitch. Thousand plus shows. The launch of this secret project I've put thousands of hours into over the last year plus. Launching sort of a, a Kickstarter probably to try to raise funds to buy a, a van that won't break down after two miles of driving. You didn't hear about it, Brother Boat? Yeah. I've been, in, I've been talking incessantly about it. <laughs> okay. In Montana, does it get humid during the summer? Does it get really hot and humid? Because I do, I do want to go up to the Northwest. I just have to figure out when. The, the, when I know I don't want to go when it's cold. But I also don't know if I want to go when it's hot and humid. 
the dry summers oh good so maybe summer summer will be the time yeah you do sound good Mr. Moon okay we got our beats and then we got uh, Giacomo 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 from Meaty Mangoes that's not it still our drums oh it's just really quiet there it is F flat gotta play an F flat Bruco semi-acoustic bass music can we go to a public pool with Doobie as long as I can wear one of those 1920s bathing suits you know that men wear meaning as long as I don't have to show my body <laughs> You know those? They're like full, <laughs> full, full coverage. Um, use McName with Glockenspiel. I mean, I could stream on Twitch, right? Right? As yeah, Brother Mooch says, it's pool. It's it's a category on Twitch now, and it'd be so much more legit if it's an actual real body of water as opposed to somebody just inflating a little pool <laughs> in their in their living room and having an inch of water just so they can technically meet the requirements of the chan of the category glockenspiel and then uh twice vaccine well understanding the weight of a flame brother roses i think you should do this show in those suits <laughs> just the normal show I wonder, I wonder if I could, uh, I wonder, I wonder, let's see, let's, I think the place to find it would be Etsy, right? I bet Etsy, I, I had a friend who would buy and sell vintage clothing on Etsy. So it would be a, a vintage, let's see, vintage male bathing suit, 1920s. I think it was the 20s, maybe it was the teens. There's photos. No, I want the actual suit. Lots of photos. Photos don't dress me, though. Okay, one more. And then we have a demonic. Did I do wind intervenes? Here's wind intervenes. Oops. I didn't do this. Brother Bose is just a normal show. Oh, and I forgot one of the. So, and then part of this whole van thing is I'm going to be starting a new YouTube show. That's going to be the. It's going to be a cross between a travel vlog and a variety show. And there will be lots of. I think I, I think there's me a lot of wardrobe, well, much more diversity of wardrobe than just my standard monochromatic T-shirts. Okay, y'all pick which sound starts the improv. Brother Rose says you're actually gonna be living in a van down by the river, at least some of the time. Yes, yes. Sometimes I won't be by a river, you know, I'll just be, you know, living in a van by a mountain or by the city dump, <laughs> you know, but yes, I'm sure I'll visit some rivers. It's too bad, I, too bad the van couldn't be amphibious. That would be cool. It could be a boat too. Brother Moose says, I think those bathing suits a bit earlier. Edwardian era, so turn of the century. It is an automaton, yeah. Yeah. It's called, we call it auto. Doug, is this disclaimer that we know unexpected raisins in the YouTube show? You know, 
it might be fun to do some uh, some pe person on the street type, you know, uh, polls and stuff. I have to. I'd have to get over my all the issues I have with having non-combatants <laughs> on video, but uh, but it could be fun to do some surveys, you know, opinions on raisins or whatever weird weird questions. Just go around and ask people. Jazz is interview more Oh, that's definitely part of the plan. Yeah. And the the one interview I did was not really legit. It's gonna be suddenly Penguin that's gonna be doing the interviews of cans, not me. But definitely. Suddenly Penguin is very ambitious. More than I am actually for this this new channel. New uh, new new show. It's a show. It's good it's a show. Taito Inspire? Sure. Let's see, what are the sounds I have? Um, This was a fun one. Let's do this one again. This was actually a Mutie's idea. Um, it's acronyms. Oh wait, Tubi disappeared. Tubi's not in chat. Oh no, Tubi hasn't gotten any messages in a while. So anything y'all wrote, Tubi does not exist as far as Tubi's concerned. What what happened? Ah. What happened? A oh, fatal error. Two, we did not get anything after uh, Doug's disclaimer message. So if you submitted anything, Yeah, vote. You might want to vote again. <laughs> but Tubi, sh I think Tubi's in Tubi's in chat now. Tubi's still catching up, but I'm. It's getting the messages. Oh, I was saying the um, title Inspire when that all happened. It's acronym. So here's how it works is um, take an existing acronym and but use n new words for the acronym for you to make your title. So an example would be um, Cows inquire aggressively. Or Muties is a better one. Queer instant androids. <laughs> and hate a, hate a, did I say hate a Q square?
But yeah, this December show, it's going to be a, an anniversary for all our different, uh, a reunion, that's the word I want, a reunion for different generations of chat. Send this Poe. Demonic Descent. Here we go, time to accelerate.
There's other people, other places Everywhere I look, I see your faces There's other people, other places Everywhere I look, I see your faces
Thanks, thanks everybody. Thanks for those calps. Oh, and thanks, thanks, brother boat. Thanks, thanks for that cheer. Thank you. Oh, what did I just do? What did I just do? Oh no, what have I done? What have I done? <sighs> I'm doing things out of order. I can't do anything out of order. Oh, and I use some titles as lyric inspiration. Nasty Nate with the slow descent. Uh, use a McName, Forever Reaching. Doug, uh, Really Scam. Uh, Muti winning in pain. Oh, thanks, Muti, for gifting that sub to Mr. Moon, 42. Okay, let's see titles. Oh, and it, sorry, Nasty Bacon Man, right? Let's see titles. Doug Day's volume with Music of Miracles. Brother Mooch, until sleep, greets silently. Miss Robert, venture into the heart. One more, one more. Let's see. Muties, clearance, and androids. Okay, let's get those up on the board. Oh, I hate it, Chubro. Three Blues from the Suns here. Gonzu, Targus Songs, David Valier, welcome. Let's see, we had Fender Rhodes, Trumpet Voice. Let me shout out a few more titles. David Valier, Single Minded Me. Jeb Rowe, Taser Face, Key Square, and so, Pet Care Advanced. Mr. Moon 42, totally my new tambourine. I'm only big child. Nice glockenspiel organization. Mr. Moon says, how have you been a musician? I started playing music, you know, when I was a little kid. Um, but I didn't really get serious until sort of junior high, high school. And then I, music was my life until I was probably... I don't know, into my, into my early 30s. But, but I, I stopped playing music for a long time. 
Uh, and then I came back because I had the idea for this show. I came back five years ago when I started this show. But yeah, I, I didn't play, I only played, a, you know, I probably played less than an hour over a, I don't know, five to ten year period. Uh, probably more than an hour, but not much. Brother Lucia's kid was born somewhere after the 1870s. Oh, thanks, Petey. Thank you. Send this bow. Doug, music and miracles. Music and miracles. I believe in... What is... Who, who is that? I believe in miracles. What is that song? Who sings that? Believe in miracles. They don't know that song was that. What's the I Believe in Miracles song? Who, who sang that? You Sexy Thing, but that's the name of the song, right? Is that the name of the band? Hot chocolate. Nah, that sounds right. That sounds right. Hot chocolate. I think that, yeah. They were, they're, they're British, right? There was a British soul band. Is that remembering that right? Okay, first request to type Mr. Moon 42's first sound. And these me names 10th key and Mawage's 50th song. uses of their British soul bands? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Uh, well, um, well, I think this, they're Scottish, but the uh, uh, um, average white band, I think, is... Are they Scottish? I got... To, I filmed average white band once. And got to meet, um, it was Alan, Alan, I'm checking their Wikipedia, I would not remember their names, but Alan Gorey and Ani McIntyre, and they were so nice. They were so nice. I mean, often, you know, people are not friendly to work, you know, the help, the hired help, but they treated us so well. Really nice guys. Yes, they are Scottish. Dundee, Scotland. And then in the 90s, there was a whole, there was a whole soul revival and soul sort of uh, new soul revival in, in the UK with bands like Brand New Heavies and Jamiroquai.
Live unexpectedly quit while you were working. Do you want to recover your work? Yes. Do eighth note drums. Brucos. Miss Moon says, "What model headphones do you use?" Um, these are Sennheiser HD two eighty Pro. I'm not I'm not really a gear connoisseur though, so um, I don't know why I have these. <laughs> I mean, I think they're they're probably good, but I don't know why I have them. I mean, I've had them a long time. Let's see, our drum kit, different kind of slapper. So now it's a good brand, yeah. I mean, they're, they're sort of in, they're sort of, a, they're, they're, they're the low end of the pro line. Low, media. I mean, you know, they're probably $100 headphones. I think they compete again. There's a Sony one that I've used too, which is was great. And uh, I think there's an Audio Technica one. Who's my says prosumer? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Are they, I've seen them in. I don't know. I feel like not many studios, recording studios, are going to want to spend more than a hundred bucks on their headphones for the musicians, right? The uh, engineer might have much nicer headphones, but the musicians usually don't. <laughs> so the head, some of the headphones I've used in studios are just horrible. You know, barely worked. In nice studios, you know, in studios that cost. Um, a thousand bucks. I've been in studios that cost a thousand bucks a day before, and <laughs> that, it's like, come on, we're paying so much. Can you please give us good headphones? Okay, Brucos. But I, I'm I'm not a connoisseur. As long as it doesn't crackle, and I have I have okay. Uh, you know, I've got some 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 lows and some highs. It's not just mids. I'm fine. Okay, this is the first beat. Brucos and then uh Ready Ready Chugger. Or is ch ch chug Chubra, right? Right now? Brother means you have to replace the ear pads. My ear pads just have just destroyed themselves. And I didn't know what I was going to do. And then I found um, they sell these replacement, just cloth that you can put over. It was super cheap. You know, I got them, I don't know, five bucks. And that's what, I mean, it's not super comfortable, if I'm being honest. But I didn't want to, I just, I can't spend any money right now on anything. So... 
trying to extend the life of these a little longer. Because they use studio monitors nowadays, but those would be obsolete 10 years. People still use them, but I, 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 I don't see myself ever. Well, I mean, if I had un, if I had lim, unlimited funds, but yeah, definitely more and more people are just mixing with headphones since since that's the way that most people are really serious about listening to their music. Uh, that's not fair, but you know, most people who are are gonna be listening on their phone with headphones. Um, Or people are listening out of their laptop where you don't really have that much stereo separation, you know. So, I think it'd be so frustrating to be a mixing engineer now. I mean, it was probably always frustrating. Because you make your mix in these perfect, situ perfect situation, but no one ever listens to your music the way it was mixed, ever. Nobody's listening in a perfectly treated room with... You know. Hey, Nerf Dermer. Um, but, you know, actually, in the expensive studios that I've recorded in my life, they always had these horrible little boom boxes. And that was sort of the most important question. Does it sound good on the boom box? Not does it sound good on, they'd have huge, you know, dance, massive speakers. They'd have those and they'd have usually two different sets of studio speakers. Um, and then they'd have the boom box. And of course it sounds good on the big speakers, you know. But no one has those speakers. <laughs> so does it sound on the broken boom box? Does it sound good on that? Then if it, if it does, then you're in good shape. Okay, let's see. Russ says, I have some studio monitors. It doesn't make much difference if the room isn't treated. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm of the opinion, which is just a personal opinion, that mixing and is, is wildly inflated in importance and mastering as well wildly inflated let's see it's like you build a bad product and then you get a great box for it you still have a bad product it doesn't matter if the box is amazing so why spend all this time on the box why obsess about the box if you're obsessive about something, obsess about the product. But again, just my personal opinion. And when I'm in the, when I'm actually making the box part, I probably obsess about it too myself. But I know I, it really doesn't matter much, except to sound engineers, and obsessive musicians. Let's see, Jenga's like bass. Again, just my opinion. That's not a bass. Oh, that's the orchestral kit. And take care, Mr. Moon. It's is, it is good to have you here today. Hope to see you again. I'll be on Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. Okay, that's our orchestral kit. There's our base.
that we get all these ultra groovalicious from mileage. Oh, wait, what? Well, I'm not playing both instruments. What's going on? Oh, thanks for that gifted sub, Nerf Drummer. I was. Are you gifted? Oh, how many? Three subs? Four? Thank you so much. Thank you, Nerf Dermer. And then we got Haunting Your Dreams from Mr. Moon. Twice facts and more violently agitated helium. I'm only a big child, zing. You just ever get into it with a sound engineer, they get into it with you. I remember back in my hip hop days, they can be really pedantic. I mean, I, I, you know, I have, I have emp a lot of empathy for sound engineers, even though I think they've been overall a, a very negative influence on music. <laughs> but I have a lot of empathy because I know what it's like to be in that situation, and, and, and it's their job to make it sound as good as possible, right? And you want to do the best you can at your job. And when I've been in those stages of making music, you know, I, I totally understand that desire to, to, you know, but, um, yeah, I, I think a lot of times when people say, when people complain about how modern music sounds, that, oh, there's better music in the 60s or 70s or something. If you took those same bands in the 60s and 70s and had them record today, you would say the same thing about them. And vice versa, if you took bands today and had them record in the 60s or 70s, you'd probably like a lot of bands that you don't like now. You know, it's, it's uh, that the packaging, I think, is very problematic. Um, but again, I, I have total empathy for why it happens. Um, and that's why I say, if you took any band in the 70s, they would do the exact same thing now. They would, they would you know, you would have um, Robert Plant totally pitch corrected. You know, if, if Led Zeppelin went to the studio today, they're going to use pitch correction. They're going to fix drum hits. Um... I don't know how we get out of get out of it. I don't know how we get out of it. I think it's just it's the, I think one of the challenges is when it's easy to fix something, you 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 fix something, right? It was very hard to fix things in in 1970, 1975. Now it is so easy to fix things. And then the problem is, let's say you record a vocal take, and there's one note that's off. It's really, it's really flat or really sharp. So you say, I'm going to fix that note, right? So you fix it, and now it's perfect. Now suddenly you realize, oh, but the notes next to it, now they don't sound right. i got to fix those notes too. And then before you know it, you fixed fixed every single note and so I, I totally understand why that happens you know or it's anything or you hear one drum hit that's off and it's easy to fix it but now it's like oh you, you just because we keep raising the bar for what's acceptable and it gets to the point where we're going way beyond what any human can do right the music now when the recorded versions of most music now is with musicians right it's, it's very different i think with electronic music it's, it's a different thing, but um, but what I'm talking about is mainly in, I'd say, in popular music, because there's so much more music being made now than there was in 1970. So much more music being made. 
So there are bands right now that are that are not doing all this stuff with you know pitch correction and fixing every single note because there's so much more music. There's so much more diversity of music now. A lot of people don't realize that that you know, but it, it, it's extraordinary the amount of music being released compared to 1975, the glory period or something. You know, it's so much more. But people mostly hear the popular stuff, and the popular stuff is where you hear the most extreme perfectionism for the most part. But despite that, there even even in music where you have that perfectionism in terms of the production, there's there's amazing music being made. Um, there's always exceptions to everything. But personally, uh, when it comes to musicians, human beings playing, I, I like hearing imperfection. But again, I, I have total empathy for the desire as a musician when you're in the studio. It's hard to see that. It's very hard to see that a mistake, a, a mistake or out of tune is good, right? It's just very hard to see that, even though it is. <laughs> You know, so I know I know why it happens, but okay. Y'all pick which sound starts the improv. Restless kids will demand when they get tired of the sameness, like the return of vinyl. I mean, you know, there's there's tons of indie bands, indie, you know, making stuff as raw and visceral as anything in the '70s, uh, and and punk and and experimental jazz stuff. There's tons of it. It's just I think you know, when you turn on top forty radio. There's much less variety of top 40 than there was in 1975, right? Much less variety. But again, when you look at the total amount of music being released, the, the diversity now is so, so far beyond even the 90s, you know, it's 80s, 70s, 60s, whatever. But most, you know, most people don't hear it, right? Most people just hear... Um, here, top 40. So I still, from a, from a creative point of view, I still prefer now, the 1970s, even though there's probably a lot more popular music in the 70s that I like than popular music now. The reason I like now better than then is because there's so many more people making music now. And there is more amazing music being made now because more people are making it. Like there's just simply way more. It's, it's like you could never in a lifetime listen to all the amazing music being made now. But sadly, most people only hear the top 40 stuff. And then they compare the top 40 of now to the top 40 of 1973 or something and you had such you know and it's it seems so much but that's that's but you know the, the difference is also I think one of the reasons people don't realize the amount of amazing music being made now is that music is just not as big as it was music will never ever be as big as it was between 1965 and 1995. It will never ever be as big as that. And that's because now there's so many other things for people to spend their time doing. But in not, you know, if you're a teenager in 1973 and, and you live in, a, in some little town in Iowa, you know, when, when the new Led Zeppelin comes out, that is the biggest event that is gonna be in your life that year. Whereas now is what we have. We got there's new games coming out every single day, new movies coming out. We've got the whole internet to cater to any sort of taste we have, any sort of weird niche interest. Music will never be as big as as 
big in terms of just dominant of culture, right? I think music is still just as meaningful and as powerful, but it will never be as, you know, never be as big as it, as during those decades. Let's see. I think that was sort of the trade-off that happened in the 90s um, was that what happened was we went, music became more democratic in that it became possible for anybody to make a record. That wasn't really until the 90s could you make a professional sounding, you know, high, high end record just on your own, on your, on a, comp you know, a computer. Um, but at the same time, Technology meant that music wasn't going to be as dominant as a force um, as it had been. Thanks, Pierre. 24 months sub. Pierre, it seems like I'm here more than two years. Says, if you see Welcome to the Inner My Bow, the first two minutes are the best in summary than that I've ever seen. Anything, everything, all the time. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's, I think often in life, it's, you know, we have trade offs of what we get. Like what I do, this show, right? This show would not be possible 10 years ago. It's only possible now, this show. Um, so. Mujama says, we're always in music, occasionally music in the oh, I don't think, no, I don't think it's dead. Again, more people are making music than ever before. But, but music will never be a dominant force in the way it was. You, you're, you're never, I think it's very unlikely you're ever going to see um yeah i don't think that's i don't think that's a bad thing though actually i mean i'm just i'm just sort of i think it's just a reality i don't think it's bad though because uh the problem with the only way music could be as big as it was was because there wasn't as many bands <laughs> you know there weren't that many radio stations so you could only have so many bands. Now, now you can you can have this incredibly tiny specific niche in music, and there's a subculture. The whole everyone in the world there's enough. Maybe there's 50 people, enough people to support this one band from around the whole world or something. That was not possible before. The only way a band could succeed in the 70s or what you know is you had to be big enough to sell a lot of records. Um, So yeah, I, I'm definitely not saying music is dead, but but I think it's you know it's inarguable that if you look at the way people spend their time now, the average person versus 40 years ago, 30 years, 20 years ago, they listen to way less music where they're just listening to the music, where it's like I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna put a record on, and listen to this. Because they're playing games, they're, and there's music in the games, and there's music in the TV shows they're watching. So they are, you know, music is still ever present. But I think a lot fewer people are. And Doug says music is dead. There's just more talking going on. Yeah, <laughs> like this show exactly.
But yeah, I, I did a music blog site for a while in the early 2000s or mid 2000s. And I listened to thousands of bands and I could not believe how many amazing bands there were just playing little tiny clubs going through New England. Just unbelievable bands that were going to have one album and then have to get day jobs and then have to quit the band kind of thing but were amazing because there's just not enough there's just not enough listeners to support the number of amazing bands there are it's just that's just the reality but they're out there if you can find them if you know where to look Well, it says music is a background thing for my kids. They always have something on, but they never just stop and listen. And I think that, more, I think that could be sort of a metaphor for the way life is sort of going for many of us. That we have so many different things demanding our attention. You know? I mean, you have a smartphone. You have infinity just right there. <laughs> Everything is available. But I think about myself, and I, you know, when I was a, when I was in high school, I would listen to records. I mean, I would it would I would set aside time in my schedule, and it's like I'm gonna listen to a record now. And I would sit there, and I would listen to the entire album. I almost never do that now. It's just sad, you know. I'll put stuff on, but I'll be coding or I'll be working on something. Okay, enough talking. Let's get back to the music. Here we go, time to accelerate.
Thanks. Thanks for those calps. Hey, Death by Coffee. Let's see titles. Hey, hug queen. Hug queen with dangerous. Muffin double agent. Dark days of autumn, spy charts. Rose pink smoothie. Here, let's get that up on the screen. I just want to say, despite my ranting about certain things about our current current uh, state of the current state of music that I that I'm not fond of, I still would not want to be making music in any other time than right now. And despite some of the the you know some of the challenges I think musicians face now in terms of Try not to be controlled by technology, and still, there's more music being made now than ever before. Amazing music. It's just we have to look for it because you know it's not as accessible as it once was. Oh, thank you. Thanks. We got a donation from Name Withheld. Thank you, Name Withheld. Thank you, and also a donation from uh, Q Square. Thank you, Q Square. Thank you. Thank you. Flute. That was it, right? Chevrolet's back to Rowdy Rowdy Chugger. <laughs> you know, lots of people change their same names, but for whatever reason, I just I just got stuck on Rowdy Rowdy Chugger. Bodybuilder 2B Stonic wants to be known as Pony Blues. And you're a mean one. I don't know why 2B keeps doing that one over and over again. You're a mean one. Something's stuck somewhere. Back when I was doing this this music site thing, I wrote software so that it would basically, you know, we'd be sent, um, uh, or we'd, I guess we maybe scraped, um, basically just scraped bands, the, the calendars of different, different uh, venues, all the different venues from, you know, venues where you'd have no more than 10 people in the audience to sort of, you know, thousand person venues. 
Um, and and then I wrote I wrote software to basically scrape their websites. And then if you know if it was Bandcamp or MySpace, it could it would uh, whatever it was, it would sort of grab the music. So you could just go through this database really fast, no matter where they're and just and hear. Because we had a certain focus, so what you know if you know I could you could sort of know within five seconds if it was the kind of band that was going to fit. Even if it was a broad category, but but it made it so much easier to 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 sort of you know get a sense of all the amazing stuff that was out there. And what's really you know it's sad is that the pandemic is you know it's it's probably going to have a life-lasting effect on the availability of live music. You know, so many venues went out of business. I still, I still, you know, I still would like someday to pursue my idea in terms of bringing bands onto this show. I mean, I'm more of, I'm a realist now that the only way that will work is if I'm able to bring people for other reasons. But, um... The, what, the idea I had would be really cool to bring different bands and um, and I would play one or two songs with them, their music, and then they would do, you know they'd do their thing. So I'd be sort of the bridge between to sort of you know bring in my, my community to sort of check out these these other groups that I think y'all might like. But I had I had such high hopes for a uh, for Safe House because they were bringing in some amazing bands, just week after week after week, and just the audience never showed up. Let's see. Is anyone? Well, there's definitely some folks here who remember Safe House. We used to Safe House. They're exactly if you didn't see it, they they were they they were based in Texas, and they um and they bought in all sorts of indie bands, you know, metal bands, punk bands, indie rock bands, all sorts of music, hip hop, and a lot of the artists they brought were, you know, notable, not famous, famous, but a lot of them, they had a bunch of artists who were well known within their genres and stuff. But, uh, and and we, I would raid them every single Wednesday. They were on. He says, don't you think their time one time a week was their downfall? Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I, I thought it was gonna, you know, I thought it should work. But yeah, I think, I think. Back in the day, if they had been doing five days a week or something, they, they probably would have grown more. But the thing is that now, grinding just doesn't work anyway. So even if they, you know, it's it would have been short-lived. Um, the days of grinding as a successful streaming strategy are long gone. You know, if anyone is coming into streaming thinking that grinding is how you're going to make it, 
No. Send this bow. Doug, it's spy charts. Spy charts. Thank you, Doug. Doug's away. What about grinding? I definitely like when I first started streaming. That was sort of the the mantra, you know, just is you grind, you know, you do, and and I I ground, I ground, I grinded, <laughs> I grinded, you know, as much or more than almost any other music streamer, right? I was doing five out five days a week, five hour shows, um, for a long time, and. Uh, And and if I and and it and it made a difference. It made a difference. But I could do seven shows a week, five hour streams now, and it would hurt me. It would hurt. It would not help. Now the key now, if, since I should I shouldn't just be negative. That the the thing the key now, if you want to succeed as a streamer, not that I'm any example of of conventional definitions of success as a streamer, but but it's pretty much agreed now at all levels of streamdom uh, is you have to do stuff outside of Twitch. That's the only way. Hence why I'm starting a, a YouTube show next year. Because if I wanted conventional, I would go, on a hot, go to a hot tub stream. But you know, you see, you see, there's some big streamers are moving to YouTube and uh, a bunch just recently. I think you're going to see more of that. Um, I don't think you're going to see many music streamers going to YouTube um, yet. Yet. Hey, Piano Parrot. Hey, John Shimoni. Ruka says, I hope music streamers don't go to YouTube. Their API is terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think as most music streamers, I think most music streamers are stuck with. I don't mean that. Not, that sounds very negative, but I think most YouTube streamers are unlike gaming streamers. YouTube streamers, it's harder for them to generate a lot of content that they can put on YouTube that's going to gain any traction. You know, so the benefit to going to YouTube for most music streamers, there's not a big benefit. There's not much benefit at all. It's gonna, you know, just, there's a reason all the music streamers come to Twitch. There's just no, and it's, you know, it's, when I'm thinking about YouTube, am I thinking of doing a music show? No, right? It's, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna incorporate music, but music, you know, if I'm gonna put music content on YouTube, for the most part, it's just, I'm just sending it to, to to wither away, you know. No, um, I think you need you need the you need the talking. You need the the you know just straight music doesn't work very well on YouTube at all. The big music streamers on YouTube, they're not successful because of their music. They're successful because they're doing music education or they're talking about gear. You take away their voice, they don't succeed on YouTube. You take away their speaking voice. You know, there's a few, of course there's exceptions. I mean, we can all, I mean, I can think of some right away, but 
for the most part. So I think definitely, f at least for the near future, it does not make sense at all for music streamers to go to YouTube. I don't want, I don't want to stream on YouTube. I don't want to make I don't want to convert Tubi to YouTube. I don't have the energy for that. <laughs> oh man, this does not sound fun. And Brooke, as you said the API is really bad. Uh yeah. No, I don't I don't want to stream on YouTube. Oh, Raging Acacias, is that a mixer? Um, yeah, I have a mixer next to me and I have mixers in front of me. This is an audio mixer, but you can see little bits of this. These are just MIDI, MIDI mixers. Well, I mean, I'm using them to mix audio, but there's no audio going through them. They're just sending instructions to the computer. Hey, Soda. I, th I mean, I I said I won't stream on. I, I I will probably. I'm sure I'll stream on YouTube. But what I'm imagining I'll do is do talk streams, very short talk streams on YouTube, and right before Twitch. So so I basically I'm I'm on YouTube an hour before this show, and then I try to get people to come to Twitch. Basically, because there's some really nice things about the way YouTube is set up for streams and that you can schedule them in advance and then they'll show up in people's feeds. So people see, oh, yeah, there's that stream It's going to be at 9 a.m. tomorrow. So it's a way to convert, um, you know, your subscribers, your YouTube subscribers to your produced videos to your live streams. It's th that's really nice. There's no equivalent on Twitch. We use this so a lot of streamers have female co-hosts. Can we get to be a big Dolly Parton wig? <laughs> yeah, Tubi's Tubi's an Tubi is an it. So really Tubi could could wear anything. Tubi does not despite Tubi's voice, Tubi is a robot. Tubi does not have a gender. <laughs> Tubi isn't Tubi isn't it. So I guess theoretically. This is not even a secret gender. Let's see. But I've I've checked out some some YouTube streams, and uh, and yeah, I mean I don't know I haven't looked at I know nothing about the API, but just on a surface level, it seems so um, so far behind Twitch. Tubi's doing the wheel of death. The apple wheel of death. I wonder how many meetings went into deciding to have that spinning color wheel. You know? How high up in, in the executive chain of command? Who, who, who finally approved the spinning color wheel? 
Oh yeah, it's definitely not gonna stop spinning. Okay, we got a four squared. Both FileMaker and Live crashed. That doesn't happen very often. Oh, it was just it was just Ableton that crashed. Josh Moise is undoubtedly Steve Jobs. Sign off. Rage the case is we need to get ready to change UI since they pick some big streams. Yeah, you know, you, I have to wonder, man, what if, I wonder if, I wonder how different it would be if, uh, if Google would bought Twitch instead of Amazon. I wonder what would have happened. Hey, UZ Racer. Okay, uh, let's get our Ableton open. Yeah, this is 1990. Apple Exec 1 says, Windows is a spinner to let the user know the computer's processing. Apple Exec 2, steal that, but let's make ours more colorful to make us feel more modern. <laughs> yeah, it was Eraser. Yeah, it's a, it's a key lab. It's a, the key lab 88, the original one. John says, Twitch will be discontinued, rebranded to YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, I'm inclined to think that streaming would not be as big if if Google would bought Twitch because Google would have just probably not really prioritized it at all. Not that Amazon really prioritizes it, but Twitch would have just felt like this tiny little part of YouTube versus it being a it biggest thing in streaming. You know, I think, but it's hard to see Twitch thriving if it can't figure out the VOD problem and the discovery problem. Okay, there it goes, finally. It's just I was buying time well. Um, yeah, I'm sad. I'm not going to be able to fit this in the van. Um... But I found there's one I, there's one keyboard in existence that I've been able to find that isn't insanely expensive that has the same key key bed as this, but is a, a sixty key I think. I can only there's only one that's being currently made. That's a, that's I think it's like four hundred bucks. There's there's one that's twenty five hundred bucks, but that's not an option. <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna sell this probably in, in six months. Well, well, it's be sooner than that. Who's erases this really heavy? It's not so much the weights that the issue, it's just it's too wide. But yes, it is heavy. This is very it's very wide. It's I think 53 inches. Um Who's erases an old Korg M1. Are there 60 key Korg M1s that have hammer action? I'm sort of a diva when it comes to keyboards. Only about one aspect. Ha I, I need hammer action. I mean, I can survive in a worst case, but I, I just, I like not weighted, not semi-weighted. I like hammer action. Doug says when you sell this jacket for dibs, what if we go on a piece of it? I, I, yeah, I, potentially. Potentially, yeah. 
I mean, it might... I mean, now that I say it, if I can afford to keep it, it might make sense to keep it and put it in storage. Because the problem is the... Um, the pitch bend is some issues. So that's going to knock a bunch of value off. And then at a certain point, it's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to really depend on finances, I guess. <laughs> OK, I'm talking too much. I, I didn't talk much at the beginning, and then I guess I made up for it in a negative way later. Battlestar. Battlestar Waddlestar, <laughs> Brother Mooch. We just can't use it as a grill of the van. And Ruger says we almost didn't beat the hour. <laughs> That's true. I guess I yeah I don't know it's just I'm old I've just been I've been streaming so many years I can't I just can't help it <laughs> I think what I need to do is create a dedicated talk stream you know just get I get it all out of my system and then we'll have music streams that are just nonstop I mean one of the new one of the mu new music stream types that I'm going to be launching around Project X I think I. Well, actually, both of them theoretically should reduce my talking. So y'all have that to look forward to. <laughs> okay, uh, Liverpool kit. I hope these sounds loaded. Okay, sounds like they did. Here's, tr no, it's, whoops, first up is Battlestar. It's the, these uh, my issue, my issue, my challenge. Having done this show for five years, I love doing the music. I love talking with y'all, interacting with chat. I do get burnt out on the logistics of the show. You know, I've done them. I've done them five thousand times. <laughs> I get tired of having to go through all the steps. It's just, it's just nicer to just talk, or play music. But there's so many steps in between each song. Okay, there's Battlestar. And then we've got Trinitro. I'll never get tired of the, of the music or hanging out with y'all. <laughs> but the logistics. <laughs> there are days I'm like, no, not again. I don't want... I don't want to... Whatever this says, it says OBS colon talk manually. What does that even mean? That's the next step. I don't even know what that means. Okay, we got our beats. Okay, and then we got sounds. Aggressive fretless. Says if you ever want to do a stream of improv where it's just nonstop music, we can be fine with that. I mean, I I enjoy doing that. Unfortunately, I have to be I have to be I have to be, um, you know, I can't do stuff for fun basically, and that wouldn't work on Twitch. At least my version of it wouldn't work, I'll say that. I'm sure there's somebody's version that would work. But I would enjoy doing that sometimes. Three hours of improv, I'd, I'd love to do that. Finger double bass from Rukos. 
Hey, Song Factory, how are you? Oh, it's good to see you. We raided Song Factory, uh, was it Thursday? Or last week? I, I lose track of all time. Uh, but Song Factory, they make music with chat. Rowdy Rowdy has requested Swell Bells too. When's your next stream, Song Factory? So you caught us right as we're, we're I'm, I'm demoing, so chat just requested these sounds. I just made some beats from people's names. So the drum beats you hear are generated using the letters in people's names. Uh, High Tech Carnival from Three Blues. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I get it, Jazzy, yeah, yeah, thanks, yeah. You stream next Tuesday? And then Pina Botsky and Joey from Jazzy. He says, couldn't you preload four songs in advance? Um, I mean, I guess it's not a big secret and it's not a big deal, but that is one of the stream types is essentially that. But there's more to it than that, but, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> You've uncovered part of Project X. <laughs> but it, it, I mean, that's not obviously an ex that exciting. That's just a tiny, that's why I'm willing to say, yes, that's one of the things. <laughs> it doesn't take thousands of hours, obviously, to do that, though. So it's a... <laughs> um, and then we got mileage with bad cornflake. But yeah, exactly what Muse is saying. So we we do all the prep at the beginning of the show, and then it'd be more of a concert where we would just break to do the 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 um, titles. So it would still be it'd be all the requests, but at the start of the show. Okay, y'all pick which sound starts the improv. Oh, Rage in the Cage are one of the mods. Oh, that's awesome. There's a connection. Sorry, you had to come in on me just ranting, talking. <laughs> this is a music show, but I, you know, I, I talk too much. That's it's just reality, sad reality. Oh, thanks, Song Factory. So yeah, so for for song, anyone just joining, so what I'm about to do, I have no idea. I'm just gonna make it up live using this set of sounds. And because this music has never does not exist yet, it means it does not have a name. So chat's going to be submitting titles of the song as the song goes. And when the song ends, I'll pick if I'll pick some of the titles, and y'all will vote. And then that will be the name, and it'll be up on YouTube and Bandcamp. And Oh, and Brucos, thanks, Brucos. Brucos gifted a sub to Song Factory. Okay, let's send this Poe. Oh. High Tech Carnival. I was saying earlier, I never remember what the sound is. When I start, I can't remember what it is. Meaning what it, you know, if it's what it's supposed to sound like. So it's hard to know what to play when you don't know what you're, what's gonna come out of the keyboard when you start playing, you know? So since I'm thinking about it and I have no idea, I cannot remember what that sound is. What is it? It's this. Okay, that's all I need. Now I know. Me says I'm shocked. I uncovered Project X, I feel so devoid. You uncovered a tiny part of it. I might not even launch that part in December. There's two stream types, one that I'll definitely launch, and then the, that one, which there's more to it. There's more to it. <laughs> Believe me, there's more to it. Um, that one, it'll depend how I'm feeling. 
It might not be till the spring. We'll see. Although I'll announce it in December no matter what, even if I delay the that stream type. But the other uh, stream type will definitely start immediately. Okay, here we go. Time to accelerate.
Thanks, thanks for those calps. And wow, thank you so much. Huge donations, wow, thank you. Thank you, Brucos. Brucos Unlocked. And Encore, thank you, thank you. And Doug, Doug with the huge donation says, on to Brucos for getting that goal. And Encore Unlocked, that calls for a goal last chance to be saved. And a four on the floor to be singing a new sound. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Brucos. Thank you, Doug. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Q Square. Thanks for that cheer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see our titles. Thank you, Brucos. Thank you, Doug. Hey, DeVolta. Hey, DeVolta's here. How are you doing, DeVolta? It's good to see you. How's the music? How's life? Good to see you. DeVolta with the title, Ticking Time and Space. Oh, thanks, Jazzy. Brother Mooch, on your six. Hug Queen with no trespassing. Ratty Ratty Sugar dipped in fire. Oh, thanks, me. Thank you. So we're doing an encore. I used some titles as lyrics. I'm eating mango. I took from Feels Riches with Holes in My Shoes. Q Squared Lunch with a Well Mannered Monster. Reginald Delroy, You'll See Me in Your Rearview Mirror. I think there was one more I used. Oh, and thanks to um, DeVolta with the 30 month sub. Thank you, DeVolta. Oh, welcome to the May DJMH. Hey to Manzanitos and Reginald Delaware. Hunter Souls. Okay, let's see, we had uh, voice, sax. Did I play Rhodes on this? I don't remember. Does anyone remember, did I play Rhodes on this lot? You think so? Oh yeah, I did at the beginning, I think, yeah. Right, right, it's going to be my new gym jam. <laughs> I 
I brought in additional kick drum help. <laughs> I brought in another drum kit <laughs> just for the kick drum, just to double up the kick drums, a, a fatter kick drum. Some other titles, let's see. John Shimoni, nobody ever wins Tetris. What was it, Tubi with electric bombs fall near the river or something? Jazzy Blazing Mansions. Mutie, Money in the Bank. Three Muffin Loaf 91, Shoo Me the Money. And again, oh, oh and then Doug Days of Autumn, Beer Pong. Brother Mooch, Game Master. Hug Queen, Tip Top Shape. Rowdy Rowdy Trigger, Toe B. McGuire. <laughs> This is to be made a title called Power Bomb the Van by the River. I wish I had a, I need, to, I need some risers for times like that. Send this boat. It's a tie, let's break it. Dionysus has chosen dipped. Dipped in fire. Oops. Hey, Rollsby. Oh, I didn't even check. Did Tubi already? Oh, yeah, Tubi's already. We do four on the floor. Do we have any? I do have a lead. Okay. Thank you so much, Rowdy Rowdy Chuger. A donation, thank you. Thank you. Smashes our kit. We're going to feature first request ever. We're going to turn Song Factory into drum loop on this track. I'm on the Big Child's 25th sound. Mises, do you remember what caused that shift with that last song? Well, it's the, it was the th fourth, fourth section. Right? It was the fourth section. Yeah, it was the fourth section. The fourth section was a, re, re, borrowed some parts from the first section. Um, I don't know why. I don't. I think I must have played something that just started feeling sort of more intense over that, and then I started doing my my techniques for ramping up energy 
which are pretty straightforward. I start putting distortion on things, especially the drums. I add more dissonance. more delays to make this everything thicker and bigger sounding I doubled up the drum the, the kick drum so it would be more propel us forward more and I switched to four on the floor at the very end right it wasn't four on the floor to start all of those things together ramp up energy even though the tempo doesn't actually never actually changed those are ways to ramp up energy. More repetition of notes. Simpler, simpler rhythms. I was doing simpler rhythms in some instances than I had been at the beginning of the song. The bass became more repetitive and simpler at the end, I think. Okay, let's see. Oh, and let's save this last chance sound that, that Doug just saved. Uh, it's LFF, Doug, LFF. Thanks. Thank you so much, Doug and Brucos. Thank you. Oh, we're going to do four on the floor. Do four on the floor. Oops. I do we want 16. Yeah, we'll do 16. No drum fills. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. First up, loops. Hey, Calamity Vane, thank you so much. 49 months up, thank you. 49 months. I sort of liked the bass when I was just moving it. But no, we're doing, we're doing classic four on the floor. Those snares are very loud.
There's loops, then Song Factory. That are kicks. Got our beats. Nice. Oh, we got so oh, we'll do the let's do our sounds first. First up, meeting with upright ballad bass. And then Bruco's upright jazz bass. Two acoustic basses. Seventies funk clav. And then that was from Q Square from My Only Big Child, Zebulon E. Hornswoggle of the Zealand Hornswoggles. Well, I'll sort of oops, oh geez. And then Jazzy, previous name lost. That doesn't sound like 132 BPM. Y'all pick which sound starts the improv. Oh, LFF, that was the one I just played, Doug, the, uh, the uh, gated, gated sound. But it might still be loaded. Let's see, is it still loaded? No. I'll play it again. LFF. Oh, you meant just J, okay, J, I. Still the same thing. Here we go. One, the nice thing about getting that, if I get that keyboard, especially for the van, it'd be nice to have a working mo uh, pitch wheel again. 
I'm afraid I almost never use this one anymore because I'm afraid it's going to get all messed up. I did use it on that last song briefly though. Doug named one of them Little Falling Flowers and the other one Just Ice Ice Baby. No light show? Is that not open? Why is it not open? Oh, there it goes. Hey, bit of something, how are you? And Blue TM, is that it? Welcome. Oh, we had a raid? Who was the raid from? I missed it. Oh, it's Pit of Something. Thanks for the raid, Pit of Something. Let's do a reverse raid for Pit of Something. Let me make sure I'm following you. Let's all go follow Pit of Something. What were you doing today, and when's your next show? Am I on the right page? You're doing some uh, Minecraft? Am I on the right one? Pit of something. Pit of something says next stream is on Tuesday. Today I was doing some Minecraft, just laid back, chilling, cool. Okay, we're starting with Zebulon E. Hornswoggle. So for Raiders, I do improv. I mean, I just make up music on the spot live. Um, but it's very interactive in the chat. The, well, I'm about to do one, and what chat just voted on, they chat chose all those sounds for me to use. And chat chose this Zebulon as the first sound I have to use. And since this music does not exist yet, it doesn't have a name, so y'all and chat can help name whatever I come up with as I'm making it. But this is not a composition show. This is a performance. Meaning there's no stopping and starting. It's going to be all in one take, whatever happens. Okay, here we go. Time to accelerate.
Thanks, thanks for those calps. Thanks everybody. Let's see. Oh yeah, this is out of, this is definitely not centered, huh? Why does it not look right? That's a little better. Let's see, titles, what do we get? Calamity Vein, Electric Feel. Oh, thanks so much, Remaster 1UP. Thanks for the resub, thank you. Let's see, other titles. Um, oh, hey, Booster Boys here. Unique Phase. Jazzy Techno Tango. And one more. Q Square Indie Wings. Okay, let's get it up on the board. Yeah, ex hey, Exner says, kid, this bot is really good. It's community. You have a great community. Yeah, the community. All, yeah. It's a community project. Thanks, Booster Boy, for the five month sub. And Calamity Vane just gifted 20 subs. Thank you so much, Calamity Vane. Thank you. Looks like there's a bug. Tubi said, gift the 20 subs. They given zero subs. <laughs> Thanks, Calamity Vane. Thank you. And Doug gifted a sub to uh, Tadpoles. 535th gifted sub for Doug. Thanks, Doug. Oh yeah, Tubi sang on this. And I sang a little bit with Tubi also. That was it, right? I think I played a little rose, didn't I? Did I? No, I didn't. No. I don't think so. Oh, Sponge Show gifted a, a friend to Manolise Bribos. It's Mirta Goodman, a preposterously cute talking unicycle who carries a briefcase full of cool bluebells. Oh, I see Jazzy and Brother Mooch were telling me to bring in the kazoo and the triangle. Yeah, welcome to Manolis Bribos. And Tadpoles is here. Electric muckaroo and bees. When you play music this lit in the van, you need to be careful with all the gasoline. It's going to be adjustment trying to groove while I'm sitting, sitting down, you know? It's going to be a change. For anyone just joining, I um, what Mudi's referring to is 
uh, beginning early next year or early mid next year. I'm not sure exactly when. I'm going to be uh, moving the show into a van. Streaming from a van all over America. Sometimes I'll be streaming outside. As much as, well, yeah. With interesting backgrounds, hopefully. To be, I've got limited tracks I can use because of my audio interface's limitations. So when uh, I, I added a second kick drum again on that song, but when Tubi started singing, Tubi and the kick drum, I couldn't have both going. <laughs> so we, we had to chill out our kick drum for a little while. Let's end this poll. That song will be known as Unique Face, courtesy Boosterboy83. Unique phase. Thank you. Thank you, Booster Boy. I put a, um, on the, the, um, uh, on the clav, I put an auto filter. That's why it sounded the way that it did. And then I later put a filter on the weed synth also. Not the same filter, different auto, different filter. Check for s okay. Electric muckaroo and bees is now honey muck and Cheerios. Our show is live from a game of chance. We did five tracks, Winds and Wanderings, Music and Miracles, Spy Charts, Dipped in Fire, and Unique Phase. Oh, we did two, two, two 25 plus minute songs. Oh, we got a pie chart. We're gonna do that first. Pose and Pies. Any minute, Doobie. What are you doing? There you go. Okay, Tubi. We're ready for you. Tubi, take it away. Call your cousins around. It's time for Pose and Pies. What? Here's a question. Which of the following would you most like to be reincarnated as? And your options. 1. Sea Slug. 2. Axolotl. 3. Unicorn. 4. Manta Ray. 5. Sandwich. McDuff's, yeah. McDuff, I'd love, I'd love someday to have a... I've, n I've never actually played a clavinet, I don't think. An actual one. I've played Hammond Organ. I've played a Wurlitzer. I've never gotten to play a real clavinet. I'd love to, though. Which of the five would you most like to be reincarnated as? A sea slug, an axolotl, a unicorn, a manta ray, or a sandwich? <laughs> I wasn't expecting a sandwich <laughs> at the end. Um, wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's got it's to be the sandwich. I agree, Blue. We're going to do a sandwich. Sandwich. Okay, let's end this. What is chat chosen? Sandwich. Sandwich is between sandwich, unicorn, and axolotl. Okay, we got one more pose and pies from Tubi. What you can give us? 
Who's your favorite robot that can bake a pie on Twitch no cap? T-O-O-B-Y you ain't got no alibi. It's time for the pose and pies. The pose and pies. The pose and pies with Tubi. That's me. Here's the question. Which of the following would make an absent mindedly beautiful tattoo? And your options. 1. Jazz flute. 2. 5 1 quarter inch floppy diskette. 3. Elderly fisticuffs. 4. Bocce ball. 5. Adventure. 6. Smithsonian. 7. Gump. Which of the following would make an absent mindedly, according to Tube, absent mindedly, absent mindedly beautiful tattoo, a jazz flute, a five and a quarter inch floppy diskette, elderly fisticuffs, bocce ball adventure, Smithsonian, or Gump? If I was actually going to get a tattoo, I won't. I have no plans to ever get one. I would get the floppy disk. <laughs> I would get it's so it's so iconic. I mean, no one would recognize it under the age of uh, I don't know thirty. But although bocce ball, has anyone played bocce ball? I love bocce ball. I I maybe I'll get a bocce ball set for the van. Oh, bocce ball is so fun. Because you can play bocce ball anywhere. Right? I forget how the, I forget the rules. Oh, EXner, you know? You know under 30? <laughs> you know what a floppy disk is? You're try you're 29, right? <laughs> Blues is why do you have the save icon, right? That's how people would know it from say that's right. Although, I I didn't really pay attention. Elderly fisticuffs? <laughs> How did I miss that before? How did you come up with that, dude? Elderly fisticuffs? Two, two elderly men <laughs> in battle? That would be a funny tattoo. I mean, it's horrible, but it's funny. Oh, I, I'm not sure now. You're 18, you've had a few floppy disks? Uh, I, I'm going to go floppy disks. Go on floppy disks. Okay, let's end this poll. What's chat chosen? Oh, wow. Folks agree. Floppy disks. Followed by elderly fisticuffs, followed by gump, followed by bocce ball. Nobody chose jazz flute. Nobody chose adventure. I mean, adventure, that's pretty cool. I don't know. Not if it's the word. <laughs> You know, adventure. That's sort of that's sort of cheesy, right? But if you have some mythic scene of adventure, I don't know Icarus or or or, or uh, um, I don't know who else, Ulysses or something. I didn't mean to say Icarus. I meant to Ulysses originally. <laughs> Icarus had a one-way adventure. The Smithsonian Museum is that or magazine? Q squares is the food is awkward shape for a tattoo. Right, it's what what is it? Is it a stick? Is it a flute? Is it a toothpick? It could be many different things. It's It's not exactly an iconic shape, the flute. It's a generic shape. Well, an alto flute. Have any and is anyone well there's some flutes that they curve. Although that just looks like a, a candy candy cane. <laughs> Is that a candy cane or a flute? Oops. Uh, let's see. Oh, I need to be on that screen, don't I? Let's do our thank yous. Our superstar mods, Brother Bode, Brucos, Tubi. We had a raid from Pit of Something. We had lots of generosity. Thank you so much. Thanks to everyone for the trio of shows. It's been, everyone's been really supportive. Thank you. Mileage, Brucos, Doug, Name Withheld, Q Square, Rowdy Rowdy Chuger. Thank you so much. 
Um, thanks to the cheers from Q Square and Brother Boat. Lots of gifted subs. Brucos to Song Factory 69, Calamity Vane, Dual Weld 92228, Calamity Vane to EX, Nero, Hippo, Ghost 8585, Heswav, Manilos Bribos, Mendes Elite, uh, Sirius Studio Similarian, Twitch Worship Collective, Vert to Ferk, Whale World Peace, Sankara, uh, Doug gave to Tadapoles, Beauty gave to Mr. Moon 42, Nerf gave to uh, El Biero, Russ Psychosphere, Very Handsome Billy, um, Very Handsome Billy is an amazing streamer. If anyone hasn't seen him, please go follow Very Handsome Billy. Um, f five months for Boost Boy 83, 48 for Brother Boat, 49 for Calamity Vane, 30 for DeVolta, 7 for Jazzy, 2 for Remaster 1 Up, 15 for Jesus McName, 24 for Pierre TV. Thanks to all our requesters and chatters. Thanks, everyone. Now it's time for the shout out. These 25 names you see on screen, either named or current tour, named or venue, named one of our songs, made a request on one of the songs. Is that everything? We featured Three Blues from the Sun, Three Muffin Loaf 91, Booster Boy 83, Bodybuilder, Tubi Stong, Brother Mooch, Brucos, Doug Days of Autumn, Elijah the Hate Um, GD Bill, Huck Queen LDM, Only Big Child, Jazzy Mileage, Mr. Moon 42, Mr. Robert, Beauty Mangoes, Nasty Bacon Man, Neighborhood Watch, Q Square, Reginald Delroy, Ratty Ratty, Chuger, Song Factory 69, Twice Vaccinated, Mole, Using McName, and Wow, 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 wow Soda. Let's roll these sub credits. Now we got some new sounds. Brucos gifted a bunch of new sounds. Oof. First up. Brucos gave this sound to E. Exner. E. Exner, you get to name this sound. HKH. Let me play it. We might get some weird sounds. Let's fade out this music. Here's HKH. Nope. 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 Um, why don't I hear anything? There it is. Oh, DeVolta named us. Hey, DeVolta. I'm not sure, DeVolta, if, if, if you were here when I... I you might have stepped... I'm not sure if you heard it, but I just... It was awesome. It's awesome to see you. Uh, in case you, you stepped out when I said that. It's really good to see DeVolta. Uh, DeVolta named the sound Moustache. Yeah, Drunner, yeah. But I hope your family, I hope your music, life, everything is going well. Uh, Brucos gave to John Shimoni. Oh, and, and DeVolta, and, and anyone who hasn't heard me talk about it, almost everyone has. Pencil in the month of December. I'm planning, most likely, sometime in the month of December, to have the biggest show ever in the history of the show, channel. Celebrating five years on Twitch, a thousand plus shows. It's going to be a reunion for all our different generations of chat. Um, be launching... Project, the first phase of Project X, which I put thousands of hours into. No one knows what it is. Uh, although Muti, Muti figured out a minor part of it. A very tiny part of it. <laughs> and, and I'll be uh, launching uh, um, uh, probably a Kickstarter to, to raise money for the, the van. Because the plan is to start doing the move into a van in, next year and travel around the country doing shows from the van. 
And also, I'll be launching my debut episode of my new YouTube show, all in this one show. I don't know the date yet. It's going to be sometime in December, I think. Okay, that was T.I. for John Cimone. Mujimas is right, the watch part, not mad, just disappointed, yeah. There's going to be so many things happening at this show. Even if y'all are disappointed with Project X, it'll be okay, right? Because there'll be so many other things happening. This is going to be a 12-hour show. Oh, you're in Colorado, DeVolta? I would love to come through Colorado. There's so many beautiful places in Colorado. Thank, thank you for that invitation. Thank you. Um... Yeah, I'm nearby. I don't know if you, well, you, I think you knew this, but I'm in New Mexico now. I've been in New Mexico for, well, for a while, I guess two years. Okay, and then Brucos gave this sound to, wait, is this one you already named? Oh, this is a new sound for, for DeVolta, SDI. Right? Wait, did I load it? SDI. doesn't want to load. Let's try again. Oh yeah, you did name this one. Yeah, yeah. Moustache. Mushimas has already volunteered Mr. Robert's couch. I'm sort of a I'm a I'm a man of habit. I'm a man of habit and uh I honestly I think that um I think the once I as soon as I get used to sleeping in the van, I'm gonna feel most comfortable sleeping in the van. <laughs> but what I'm not gonna have in the van is the shower. <laughs> so so if if y'all want to meet me really smelly and then fresh smelling, you know, you I could borrow your shower. Both say here that I'm on the road a lot. Mujma says I too am a man of habit. Okay, and then we have uh, what else? JKH Brucos gave to Rage in a Cage. Ducks is I have an outdoor hose. Yeah, we, we might want to start with the outdoor hose before I'll stay 10 feet away from you and you can greet me with a a, a pressure. What are those called? Pressure hose? You know, the, the, the things they clean sidewalks and, and paint off of buildings. I'm going to need that. There's all these sponge bath bathing. No, I'll pro I'm, I'm sure I'll get at least one shower a week. I'll get a gym membership or, I'll, you know, truck stops. There's lots of places. Wow, that's interesting. EX are named their sound Transcendence. Hey, Pythagoras here. Pythagoras, I need to come up with a new way to say my new say my name. Devol says, check out YMCA. Some of them are really nice. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. YMCA. Ratty Ratty Cruz is sometimes car washes. Have those dog washes. You know what I should do, Rowdy? I should I should have You know what I could do for a shower? Is I'm I'll probably, you know, I'll be I'm gonna probably get a a, a fan vent. So I'm gonna have to cut a rectangle a square at the top of the van. What I could do is um 
yeah, I could just, I could hang shower curtains and, and take the fan out and just drive through the car. <laughs> car <laughs> Wait, I can't drive and shower at the same time, though, can I? Uh, I guess that idea won't work. Oh, well. And DeVolta warned about them from a group called the Village People. <laughs> You know how that's so. You know how when you you go to an internet site, they often they'll and you sign up for something, they'll ask you how'd you find out about us. <laughs> that would be so awesome if the YMCA did that. You know, it's like how do you find out about the YMCA? Google search friends and family, the village people. <laughs> Brother Moose is not with that dude like that. You can't. I know that's true. Okay, I've got an idea. Okay, I'll have an extra long steering wheel, right? An extra long steering wheel and I'll have virtual reality glasses so I can see through the windshield as I'm getting a shower because I'm going to be tall enough. My body's going to be outside of the van, you know. <laughs> You're going to see my head, my head sticking out of the van getting the shower. So I'll need those VR glasses. I won't even be able to see the steering wheel because it's going to be, you know, under the roof. <laughs> Brew cups. <laughs> Probably not the best chemicals, yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of problems with this idea. <laughs> Media says, can you just follow weather reports and drive towards the rain? Yeah. I mean, if we're all being honest, you know, the main reason to shower frequently is for other people right that's the main reason so if you go through long you know i'm sure there'll be long stretches i'm not going to see anybody you know it's no big deal <laughs> pythagoras is because of vr headset in the water sound like a good plan <laughs> Welcome to my world. I have a good idea. And then when you really look at that idea closely, you realize that it is, it breaks down immediately into many, 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 many bad ideas. Devolta says, where is the trip going to take you across America or just certain parts? Well, I mean, if I'm being... I didn't come into this idea with a trip being the motivation, really. Um, so I don't have a trip planned. I think um, I think to start, I'm probably going to mostly stay around the Southwest. Um, you know, I've been here two years and I really haven't explored that much. So I'd love to. New Mexico is an amazing place. So. I think to start, I'll probably spend most of my time New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, Colorado, um, and then, and then I'll might I'll probably in the course of the year do one trip, sort of around the whole country. But I'm gonna be I don't like driving at all. I hate driving, <laughs> and um, more than that. One of the main motivations, justifications, or hopes for this is this YouTube show I'm going to create. So I'm going to be trying to produce a ton of content. Um, so I'm not going to have the time to drive a lot. I think what I'm thinking is I'm going to probably, you know, drive no more than an hour in a day and, and probably, probably only make it every other day because I'm going to be producing content and doing the stream. And uh, so, yeah, so I don't, so I'm going to really play. I'm not going to go in with a, a plan. I don't think. I'm just going to sort of let things happen in terms of where I'm going um, and let the weather choose. And, and maybe, and it might be some, I think I'll probably involve our community in making decisions because I honestly don't feel very strongly when it comes to the outdoors I just love the outdoors so I and and part of this for me is is uh, you know I've been very cloistered 
for the last, well, definitely for the last six years, especially for the last two years, and in some ways maybe for like 20 years. So I, I'm just excited to be out in the world and exploring. So almost anywhere I think I'll be, will be uh, inspiring. <laughs> Big Child, I, I'm scrolling back. Big Child says, in the times of pandemic, if someone can smell you, they probably didn't maintain distance, yeah. This is be like the widow's hope or wherever the trade takes you. He actually says, how are you solving the internet connection? The internet's going to be the most expense, my biggest expense every month. Almost certainly more expensive than VAMP payments. Um, so I, when I first had this idea, um, the internet was the big question. And so this was back. And so I, what I did is I basically tested. I did a test in July, I think. And I got the kind of gear that I would need, and I did and 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 I did a bunch of streams, just hike, hiking streams. Some people here saw them, and I went to some places that that certainly felt very remote. Now I was careful to be relatively near cell phone towers, but um, but it, I'm I'm pretty confident. I mean I'm confident that I can make it work with the internet, but it'd be we're taught for internet. I'm gonna be look. I'm gonna be spending. Anywhere between three hundred and five hundred dollars a month on internet, which is sickening. But I mean, things might get easier by the time. I mean, this I'm probably not going to hit the road till the spring. So you know, maybe things will get a lot cheaper, and and I'll find out something. I'll figure out something viable. But I think the least amount of money I can will be probably two hundred bucks. And the reason for that is that you cannot get you cannot get unlimited internet for your computer on the road. You can get it for your cell phone, but you can't get it for a computer. So I can't do a sophisticated stream, a mute this music show from my phone. You know, I just, it's, I would be very unhappy trying to do it from a phone. So I basically need the kind of gear that IRL streamers use, and it's very, very expensive. The gear itself, what it, what it does is it takes, um, up to it takes as many as four different internet connections and it combines them into a super internet connection so you're basically you have this hardware that 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 basically you know send splits your stream into multiple parts sends it up to the cloud to this cloud server that recombines them um and then sends it out and oh and happy birthday asdi happy birthday can I get a Starwink dish? Not yet, no. Uh, that's not possible with Starwink yet. You can't move your address yet on Starwink. There, you know, Elon Musk has made it sound like someday you can, but it's not something that's possible now. Um, and, you know, you need a big satellite. You need those. They're not that big, but it is, you know, it's, it's not an antenna. I hope, I hope... That would be great eventually, because that would be a lot cheaper. Um, but uh, he actually says you try making a mobile hospital and getting a Wi-Fi connection. Well, that's just, that's essentially what it is. The Exner is I would be getting. That's why it would be so expensive. Is I would be getting three to four mobile hotspots, and then merging them into one super signal. Um, but you know, with uh, it, it really depends. I mean, when I first had this idea, the whole idea was built around streaming. Um, and I'd be streaming, I went streaming a lot more. And, you know, since then, I've, I've finally accepted that, that streaming is, you know, I, I, there's no way to say it nicely, but streaming is dead end. Um, it's what I, what I love most, and I hope to be able to do the rest of my life but it's dead end. If, if you're trying to build a life on streaming, it is virtually impossible now. And, um, and so that's when I shifted to I want to start this YouTube show, which will be different than this. And, uh, and, and so I'm, I probably won't stream as much as I originally planned, 
So I might not need to spend as much money as internet, but I'll still be up need to upload a lot of stuff. Um, but I I don't I don't want to be. You know I know I don't want to just be streaming in cities. I want to be able to be in the desert and and just be in a cool place and and be able to stream. I don't I don't want to. I mean no matter what I'm gonna have to look for cell phone towers. But basically what I figured what I was able to experiment with is that pretty much anywhere along an interstate um, or any major road, which they go through the really amazing, you know, they go through all of America, I can stream. I might not get a stream exactly where I want, but I just need to find, you know, they, cell phone towers are all along. So, DeVos if you hit, if you hit, um, you call right, especially in the rocks, you will lose data no matter how much gear you have, so I'd avoid getting between a couple 14ers. Yeah, the, the key is um the key is uh that's why the you have the four four different internet connections. Cause even if you have and you get different providers. So I would probably get two Verizon and an ATT and a T Mobile. Um and I would try to park as close to towers as I could, um, and then I'd be totally, I'd be totally fine. I mean, I, did, I when I was testing, I only had three connections, and I think we did four shows, and and there were and and I had issues when I was moving a few times, but if if I set up in a location, I'll know it's going to work, you know. But yeah, there's definitely places in the mat, you know, there will be places where it's impossible, no matter what. You, no matter how much gear I have, and it just won't be possible. Here, I'll hang out with y'all a little bit. The show's over, but <laughs> I'll come close. I'll sit down and hang out for a little bit since I won't see y'all till next week. Just go to the ski resorts with some cell power. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. You know, when I when I first had the idea was I, I really wanted to do hiking streams and I and I wanted to hike and do the show in like in the middle of nowhere. Um I that I don't know if I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Because the plan was going to require me carrying up upwards of 50 pounds of gear, and uh, and even though I know it will work, because we had those successful hiking streams, um, it's not it's not going to it wouldn't be worth the risk basically. <laughs> uh, it just like the risk to the to my body and the risk to the gear. Um, it just it would not benefit the channel enough to justify risking all those things. <laughs> but I will be doing some music for the YouTube channel where I am out in the middle of nowhere. But that will be produced stuff and I won't need as much gear. Me says we be have driving cams. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because remember, Muti, I, one of the things I want to do is I'm going to get a green screen for the windshield. So during live streams and also on YouTube, I can put stuff in the wind. I mean, the most mundane thing, but still somewhat interesting, is I could literally play back footage of my drive while I'm hanging out doing the live show, right? Looking at you. I'm not driving. But as we talked about, the green screen on the windshield means we can also have... It looked like there's the vehicle is driving through the ocean, or maybe there are giant dinosaurs walking around. (laughs) 
Mooch Moss is that one time kid pretended to trip and then the got it cut that got infected. Yeah, that that's been a disaster. That has been a very that's <laughs> that had disastrous consequences. I think that was a dose of reality. Because even though it was it was self-inflicted a hundred percent, just the, just realizing I'm older. I don't I do not heal like when I was twenty. And if I'm carrying fifty pounds of gear, man, that was one of the dumbest things I've ever done. Oh, Devolta, you bought some land in the mountains? That's awesome. I thought at first, Media, I thought maybe you meant uh, extra cameras. I think if I can, for my own safety, I, I'm going to probably get a 360-degree camera array. Um, somewhat for driving, because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to have, have any windows in the back of the vehicle. And also, I think, I think for peace of mind, it's a little paranoid, but I think for peace of mind, um, especially when I'm doing the show, I still, I, I don't know, I, I, I don't like um, uh, forcing people to hear me. So I sort of want to know that there aren't people around the vehicle. <laughs> not even a security thing as much as it's just a uh, I don't know just situational awareness or something and they're not it's not I mean it's expensive but I think if I'm going to be living in this thing and maybe who knows how long it's sort of worth it I think he says man more while you're driving but, but yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna have some sort of camera mount or something yeah um to film, yeah, because that makes that's it's great B-roll, and uh, I I it may I might not talk much to start because you know I I don't like I said I don't like driving I don't have a lot of experience driving, and because um, I've I've never personally owned a vehicle most of my life I've lived in big cities, and I'd rent cars occasionally but so. Probably the first month, because I'm gonna be just just paranoid that I'm gonna get in an accident. If I were to if you if I were to film if you were to see me driving, I'll be just <laughs> trying to <laughs> trying to just trying to stay stay safe. I won't be able to talk much, but probably eventually I will. I I know you know back in the day when I drove more, I definitely was more comfortable. I think it's just in my old age, I'm I'm more aware of the consequences of life, you know, of of certain actions, and I don't I do not want to cause an accident that somebody else gets hurt. That's the big that that's really what it comes down to. I you know I mean I'm you know I you never know I might, but I really don't I don't want to. I want to do everything I can to keep everyone else safe. I'll take care of you, Exner. Great to have you here. Blues is time last high with your music in the background. Be great B-roll. Yeah, I, I want to have a lot of integration with music in this YouTube show. It's not, there won't be, it's not going to be, I don't think there's going to be that much actual performance. So if a video is 10 to 15 minutes long, there'll probably be less than a minute or two of live performance, and sometimes maybe not even that. Um, but music will be integrated throughout. You know, you'll, there'll be background music all, you know, much of the time, setting the mood and... Um, Rukas has just got to take it easy and make sure your gear is safe and secured for unexpected quick stops. Yeah, one of the things I have to figure out, Brukos, is um, you know most most van lifers the way they set up almost everybody does it one way, which is um, the cabinets go along the vehicle, opening up in you know inside, not towards the front or the back, right? 
But the setup that I need to do, if I'm going to use the vehicle that I'm planning on, everything is going to open up towards the front of the vehicle. So I need to have some locking mechanisms on all the cabinets. Uh, you know, I can't just have some little pressurized thing. I need actual latches so that if I slam on the brakes, you know, I'm not going to have a, I don't know, a flute impaling me in the back of the head or something. So I got to figure that out because most, you know, most people don't have that worry because things aren't going to go towards them. They're going to go, you know, fall out. So they're not as... They'll have uh, you know pressurized things or magnets, but I don't I don't want to have magnets. <laughs> Three boosts in the sun. This cabinet's like in a sailboat. Um, I don't know what that means, but <laughs> I've never I don't know that I've ever been in a sailboat. But you mean those have latches or something? Cloudy veins is a bar across cabinet doors. Yeah, yeah, that's and I I could have just a big some yeah that go all the way across. Blue says there's a latch and everything. Yeah. So that's a good... So I'll look into sailboat hardware. B says, what about mounting instruments on top of the car? Um, well, I'm going to have... Um, I, I'm actually not what well, I'm gonna have solar on the the top of the van is gonna be ultimately probably covered in solar um, so I I don't think I'll be able to put anything up on top of the van because I'm also gonna have a fan up there um, but what I'm gonna do with the instruments is actually have a a vertical cabinet that is going to slide out so it's going to be like what you see there not as big because I can't I'm not going to fit all that stuff it's going to be about three it's going to be about two and a half feet you know by about uh, three feet or so and so it's going to slide out so if I'm if the van is like this right I'm facing the back of the van it'll slide out on my side so I can reach and it'll be on it you know be on it um, and I want it that way so we, and I'm going to design it so it can also slide out the other side from the back of the van because I want to be able to do shows outside um, so I basically need a reversible setup so I can either sit inside of the van and do the show and have this this you know my desk with the keyboard and everything or I can stand at the trunk of the you know and the instruments slide out next to me, the keyboard slides out in front of me, and then the camera points, and, and then I could, you know, I could have the ocean in the background, or a mountain, or a desert, or or Home Depot, <laughs> wherever I am. Uh, DeVolt says to your build, no, this would be a great start to the video. That's, that's the plan. That's, yeah. So the I'm going to start the Kickstarter in uh, that December show, and I'm going to launch the first episode, and then um, uh, you know it's, the Kickstarter will probably be 20 to 30 days. I'm mean, then I'm going to buy a vehicle as fast as I can. But realistically, the vehicle I want is not very common. I might have to drive 500 miles or something to get it. I might have to go to another state. They don't. They're not exactly growing on trees. They're the most popular minivan for van life. Um, and then, yes, take, take two to three months to do the build and do videos of the build. But, but videos within my overall concept, which is van, which is travel vlog meets variety show. So, so, it, you know, it might be a video where in principle it's about building the floor, but I'll also do a, a music song where it's in the van or or they'll I don't know, there'll be there'll be comedy segments, different segments, but it's sort of a you know, I it's a weird idea. I've you know, I don't know of anyone doing something like it, which is usually a bad sign, but I think it's I know that I would get bored of doing a travel vlog real fast if I was just doing that. 
And, um, and I think this idea, the biggest challenge is keeping myself motivated and excited to do produce content, right? Not improv, but produce content, which I don't like as much, is much harder than improv. So I want something where I can basically do anything. So that's the concept. Travel vlog meets variety show. As you said, what vehicle are you looking for? Um, Ford Transit Connect from 2010 to 2013. Ideally the 2013, since it's gonna be the newest one. The reason for that is the, 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 the Transit Connect, hey Tower, come in, welcome. Um, the reason for that is that it is the highest van that's a minivan. It is not high enough for me to stand in, not even close, but um, it's significantly taller than any other minivan. But it's only those years. The Transit Connect in 2014, they, they chopped off six or seven inches. Devos said not to probably without eating health and so forth. I, I have most of my diet already planned out and I'm not, I'm actually, I'm actually feeling confident I'm gonna eat really well. Um, I, I think most people would not be very excited about my plan and, but I, I'm very good at um, repetition when necessary. You know, I've eaten oatmeal almost every day for the last 20 years, 25 years probably. Um, Pythagoras is by used ambulance. You know, I've seen, there's a lot of, a lot of van lifers I've seen are, are doing that, Pythagoras, yeah. Um, you know, I, I may change my mind, you know, I, I haven't, until I buy it, I, you know, I could change my mind. But there's a bunch of reasons why I, I want to do a smaller vehicle to start, you know. And uh, so I, that's why I'm leaning towards this more of a minivan style setup. But be, with this specific model of the minivan, I, it's gonna, it's gonna, I have a, my plan. It, it'll be designed in a way that will feel pretty spacious. It's gonna, it's very different than, I mean, almost every van, again, almost every van build people do, it's exactly the same. You know, they, they, everyone does the same thing. And, it, and that would not work at all for me. Um, I, need a, I need part of the vehicle that is just totally open, nothing in it, nothing there, so that I can do the show, so I have space. Um, so that's why I want this, the high, the high roof. But I might change my mind and, and be up for something bigger. But I, 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 you know, I'm really not kidding when I tell y'all that I don't like driving. And, and that's a really big reason why I want to start with a smaller vehicle. Um, but there's, a, there's other reasons too. Devo but yeah, for eating, um, I don't like cooking. I'm not going to, and I know I'm not going to suddenly want to start cooking when I live in a van, when it's even less convenient. So I'm great. I love eating raw food, raw vegetables. And um, so I'll probably, I'll eat a lot of raw vegetables. I love nuts. I'll eat a lot of nuts. And um, um, I love raw spinach and I eat tons of raw spinach. So I'll have a fridge. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna have an actual fridge. I'm gonna have a microwave, which I know is sort of crazy. But all the things that I microwave, I only microwave things. I only microwave my oatmeal for uh, 60 seconds. My lunch that I eat now, I, I microwave only. For, it's 90 seconds, and I'm gonna have a big enough battery that that's the microwave's not gonna be a big deal. When you, when you're only doing 60 seconds, it's not gonna have a massive impact. Blues is in theory the ambos would have been maintained better than the random use vehicles. Yeah, one of the most 
famous van lifers on YouTube is this guy. Um, I don't remember his name, but his channel is called Cheap RV Living. He's he's you know he's this he's this older gentleman. He's got this big white beard and long hair, and he's been a, you know a prophet for van life for a long time. And he recently, I think in the last year, upgraded from a van to a, an ambulance, and he's he loves it. He loves the, his ambulance. That's right. Muffin says, in theory, dozens of people have died. In the I'm laughing, but that you're right. It's pretty. I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. <laughs> Pythagoras, you live in one. It seems like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's um, yeah. He, he says it's so nice because you just you just you already have all this cabinetry. You have um. You know, you're set up, I think, you know, you've got water, you've got all sorts of things you could use, and they're built like tanks. Devolta says, hit up those local farm markets, yeah. Muffet says, miles must be sky high. Well, so... I I would really like to get one with under 50,000 miles. There was one that there was one that had 25,000 miles, a 2013. But I it's just I'm not I mean I was tempted even though I can't I obviously can't afford it. I mean I was tempted just to get it because they're just whole, so hard to find and, and used car prices are going up because they're not making new cars right now because the chip chip crisis, chip shortage. You, van prices are up, you know, 30, 40% used cars. But I'm, you know, it is a very small vehicle and I, there's a bunch of things that I have to know I can do before it makes sense getting it. Um, Part of the whole concept of working in small vehicle is me being able to work from the ground, uh, not using a chair. And I've started training on that the last month or so. So I spend, I'm spending around two to three hours a day working from the floor, but I'm not that flexible yet. And so my posture isn't great. So I'm trying to improve my flex flexibility. Um, but uh but that yeah so that's can it can i do that and then i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna make i'm gonna mock it up you know i'm gonna play fort like a little kid and i'm gonna i'm gonna make it just the size it's in a, in a month or two i'm gonna you know the exact square footage and the height and just force my you know spend spend a lot of time and just make sure can i psychologically handle a smaller vehicle living out of a tiny thing like this. Pythagoras says don't ever buy an ambulance from an ambulance service, only from a 911 agency. Oh, hey, demo card. I'm actually, I'm at the end of the, we're just hanging out at this point, and I don't actually play covers. I do improv, but thank you for the request and welcome. Um, I would love to, if you come back, we've got a show Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I could turn your name into a drum loop and you could request, you could go, we, you could request the sounds I use. It's a very interactive show. It's different than other kinds of music shows on Twitch. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't do requests and we're done. <laughs> Thanks though. He uses what about a tank? You can store a lot of instruments in the cannon. A small tank I'd be up for. But that they have cabinetry and robust electrical system and AC and heat, right? Yeah. Yeah. But at least in theory, I mean, I've, I've done a lot of thinking already and planning. I made a list of every item that I would need in the vehicle, which is, you know, it's surprising the number of things that we use in life. Um, and, and, um, and sort of figured out where they would go. 
And I think I'll have enough space. I'm pretty sure I'll have enough space without any problem. Where I might get frustrated is, I, is, is stuff that I'm going to get for the YouTube show. Like props and outfits and stuff, you know. I'm not going to bring all the instruments. You know, I'm only bringing a, a s small selection. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring the uh, soprano, the flute, trumpet, melodica, and keyboard. I'm not going to bring the baritone or the trombone. Um, I'm not going to bring the Fender Rhodes. The, 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 the music show is going to go from all of this to basically all these monitors, four different computers. It's going to go down to a, Mac lap, uh, a MacBook Pro, uh, a sound interface, and one big monitor. And you know, and a, and key, you know, external keyboard. Oh, thanks, thanks for the follow, demo, demo cart. Am I say is it demo, demo crit? Loses. <laughs> Where'd all this stuff come from? I mean, I'm sh I'm sure there's you know there's. I I mean I view this as part part of this challenge is is. I, one of the things one of the gifts I feel like I've received, from doing this show this experience of this channel, is really. Really learning how valuable limitations are, how lim paradoxically limitations can be freeing right um you know i think i had an inkling of that and from from the way i had created before but but you know the very nature of this show right if for any if anyone hasn't seen it before um chat picks the sounds i the beats are generated from people's names chat picks the bpm how fast it's going to be and the starting key so all these choices are not mine to be ha made I just have I give I'm given six sounds and I got to do something with them and rather than that feeling frustrated and limiting when I could have thousands of sounds to choose from I I've found that I think the variety of music that I've made over the last five years on this channel is so broader than it would have been if I was picking the sounds every song and in that same respect with that in mind I think Part of the appeal, actually, of the, this van thing is, is having to try to live in a different way. I, I haven't, you know, I don't, I've never had a ton of stuff. You know, when I moved cross country from Boston to California, I fit everything I owned into one of the smallest moving trucks, you know, just a, um, I forget how long it was, a, you know, maybe a nine, nine or a 10 foot truck, you know, not a big truck. When I moved here, I needed even less space. But this is even significantly less, right? And and so I I that's I think that that's part of the creative challenge, you know, is to find a way to do what I want with that limitation of you know every, everything is whenever possible having to think how can I use this thing for more than one purpose, or do I really need that? Can I get rid of it? So I I don't know. At least right now, I'm looking forward to that challenge. Now, once I'm in the, once I'm having to realize all the limitations, maybe I'll be very frustrated. But at least right now, it feels. Oh, background music, yeah. I wonder. You know what I should do is I should just somehow get a because it keeps stopping. Because during normal shows, you right. We. You're gonna have to keep reminding me, Muty, because it's gonna end. It's gonna stop. If I can even get it started. But what I need to do is I just need to set up. There it is. Hey, Nick, yeah, I'm done. I'm done for the night. We're just hanging out. Since I, I decided to hang out for a little bit, since I'm not going to see y'all till next week. And I love talking about, <laughs> I love talking about the, the, the future. I always like talking about the future.
Belusa's limitations breed creativity. Yes. Pythagoras is quiet in front of seven monitors wondering how he go down to one. I know I can't go down to one for the live show. I, I have to have at least two. <laughs> I mean, if I could fit, I, I just, I think I need, I have to figure out how to just have the MacBook and one screen. For work, that'll be for, for editing, right? Most of my time is going to be well, not a significant amount of my time is be doing, you know, in Adobe Premiere or After Effects or something. But and for that, that'll be fine. But running the show is it'll be an adjustment to, to, to I mean, I have everything I need to see right now and I have to there's me things I will just have to not be able to see. You says, just make sure you don't overthink or exhaust yourself. I really want you to enjoy as much as the enjoyment you plan on giving us. Thank, thank you for saying that. I, I, I think I don't tend to exhaust myself. The things that exhaust me are stress and financial stress, especially, <laughs> which is a, you know, a huge reason why this idea originally started. So, um, Yeah, I, I'm, I mean, there are lots of things I'm worried about, but I'm not too worried about that. But I, I appreciate the sentiment, though. Um, it it help, I, I, I know that it, there's going to be things that are going to be very hard for me. And I like, I've said this before, I like painting myself into a corner. Like, that's not a good thing for most people. But for me, it works. <laughs> it works. Or it, it has worked. I wouldn't want to do that. I don't want to do that the rest of my life. Keep painting myself into corners, right? But for whatever reason, that, that's, that works for me. But again, thank, I appreciate what you're saying, Muti. And, and you very well might be right. Uh, it's, you know, it's something for me to think about. Blue says, I don't know how people can stream with only one monitor. Yeah. As Andy says, I remember finding your stream when you were in California. So cool to get you watch, to watch Change Chapters move to New Mexico. This will be super interesting to, for you to literally take the show on the road, yeah. I never would have expected that I would do this. It's not, I mean, I, I don't, yeah. I, I dated somebody who, a while ago, who, when I met her, she was sort of thinking about it. And this was probably in the, I don't know, when was this? Probably around, I don't know, it was probably five or six years ago, seven years ago. And uh, that was the first time I'd ever heard about van life. I'd never heard of it. And I, you know, I didn't really think about it. It was just, I mean, I, you know, I just had stuff. I was doing video production and I still had all the music gear. So it just wasn't something that even was a possibility. And then um, when things were going real bad for me in California and I, and, you know, I was on a fast track to, uh, bankruptcy and despair <laughs> and I was like what am I gonna do um, one of my siblings had suggested that as something you know possible and at the time it wasn't I mean I just wasn't even I wasn't ready to even fathom downsizing from the huge studio I had in California right it's a lot easier to think now because I went you know the space I had in California was I don't know it was how many square feet it was it's you know, it's definitely over a thousand square feet, I, I think. I forget the dimensions. Whereas now I'm in something that's, um, you know, like 120 square feet maybe. But um, 
but yeah, and, and at the time, you know, the the internet was what well, just there was a deal breaker. I didn't even know how that would be possible. So since then, I've learned more and. But yeah, you know, I've said this before. I, I I think it's important to to acknowledge this because I think it sort of illustrates how life how how I want to live life and how I think other people can too. Which was when I first started thinking about van life seriously, which was in May. It was desperation. It was not oh I want to do van life. I'm excited about this. It was I don't know any other way I can keep doing art and music. This is it. This is it or nothing. And uh, that's not a good reason to do something, right? But sometimes desperation opens your eyes to something you wouldn't have considered otherwise. And the more I thought about it, um, the more I realized how I was really excited about it and how a lot of the things that I love in life that I haven't been able to do much trying to keep this show going over the last five years, this would allow me to do, you know, being outside, but I love I love hiking. I love being outside, um, and this would make it a lot easier to do it. Um, I've been pretty isolated, especially the last couple of years, you know. So it would make it easier. I don't really I don't know anybody where I live, you know. I mean, I know my housemates, um, and you know, and I have family nearby, and but I don't, you know, I have no social life. I've had no time for social life. So, you know, that's, it's another nice thing to be able to travel and see people and, um, and creatively, I think it's, an, I need to take this, it's an important challenge for me to take. Improv is, I don't want to, you know, it's, it's easy in that improv itself, there's, there's no, um, There's just not a challenge in improv itself, really, which I love. It's just effort, you know. I mean, there's I could challenge myself on the instruments. I could challenge myself in terms of music theory, in terms of sophistication. But just in terms of the experience of improv, it's it's my favorite thing. But it's not pushing me in the way that trying to do this YouTube thing would. And I hate to say YouTube because I'm not interested in being a YouTuber but more just the idea of doing a produced show. Um, I think that's, you know, I, I feel like it could be the next big challenge for me creatively to, to learn how to bridge what I do in improv uh, into a more produced situation. Sorry, it was a long monologue. <laughs> um Oh, thanks, Mutie. Oh, and, and the other thing, and the other, you know, there's so many things for me to be excited about this. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of fun ways that I can involve our community in both just the stream, in my travel, in uh, um, in this YouTube, in this, you know, this show I'm planning and creating. There's, it's, I have a lot of ideas for how to integrate y'all's ideas and creativity. Um um, I've also, you know, it's very valuable for me to just be able to talk out loud with y'all about this. And people have given me great ideas, you know, both in chat and over a direct message. And um, Bruce is a friend of mine, visit, bought a school bus and lived in for summer. Everyone who visited signed the inside. It was hilarious. Bruce, I'll show you some nice hikes if you're making north to Canada. I would like to. I would like to. I'd love to be in Cal go to Canada. Um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I'm not really. I'm not thinking at all really about where I want to go and. That seems very abstract at this point, so I haven't been really thinking about that. So I have no idea. You know, who knows? Maybe a month in I'll say, yeah, I'm going to go to Canada. Or a month in I'll say, I want to go to New Orleans. I'm just going to stay in New Orleans for six months. 
I have no idea. He says the world is your oyster. But, you know, for, for better or worse, there's some real negative sides of this, but for better or worse, when I have a very clear thing that I'm working on that has its own demands, um, it makes it a lot easier for me to just not be stressed out and frustrated and by other things in life. Um, so, so I definitely, uh, there's definitely plenty of apprehensions about van life stuff, you know, that there can going to be adjustment. But I think having the stream and having the, the relentless demand of this doing YouTube, ep these, these YouTube episodes, I'm just not, you know, whatever, I'm not going to have time to be worrying about van life things, like stressing about stuff, or because I'm going to be so focused on on uh, this other stuff. We'll see. I say that now. But, you know, I've lived in, I've, I've, I've squatted illegally in places before. Not that I recommend doing that, but you know, I've been in places with with no um, showers or kitchens or um, so. I'm, Doug says, wait, Tubi is blue, the world is kid's oyster, and we're a cult. I could, hang, I could totally hang out for another hour, but technically it's basically my bedtime. I've been trying to be very, very consistent oh thanks thanks Mudi thank you yeah, I I think I think I think at very least I think our community will will enjoy these YouTube things. Whether or not anyone else does, I have no idea. But Doug says, how set in stone are you about the Ford Transit? Not until I buy it. It's not set in stone until I buy it. So I might, you know, I, I mean, I'm pretty set on it. But yeah, until I buy it, it's, it's, I could change. Doug says, I know a guy with a van and an ambulance for sale. Who says on your live stream you can do like CNOA where they do screening of their short films? So well, the, I'm going to debut the first episode when, on that big show, the big December show. You'll follow up, Doug? Okay. I've been I've been learning a lot, you know. I, I mean, I I don't only have so much time because Project X is still the my top priority. Um, but you know, I, I've been learning a lot about uh, 
just YouTube in general, understanding how YouTube works. And, and you know, I'm not, I'm never going to be, um, I just, I'm, I'm never going to be motivated to do things because I want followers or subs or views. I just, that, that's just not a motivation for me at all. Um, that being said, if I can, if I can take what I want to do and optimize it, I'll optimize it, you know? So, you know, it's, it's good to understand, good to understand the inner workings of the algorithm and stay up on all that. But my basic idea, the basic idea goes right in the face of what you're supposed to do on YouTube. On YouTube, you're supposed to do one thing. You're if you want to do two things, you start two channels. And you do one thing in one channel, you do one thing in the other channel. Um, so, you know, right off the bat, I'm uh, breaking rule number one. But, but the way I'm hoping that it will sort of be one thing is that the framing device of all of these shows will be the, 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 you know, the travel vlog. That's going to be what connects everything together. So that's the one thing. Um, and then within the video, it's whatever I feel like doing. And we'll see. Muffet says, even though you're set, they got it even more, couldn't hurt. I've got a, there's a few, I got so much to do in the next three months. <laughs> it's crazy. So much to do. I, I, I really want to get all the songs I owe done before, before December. And then there's, for the debut episode, you know, it's not, in terms of the actual content of the episode, um, where's my phone? In terms of the content of my the episode, I, I want to do it like I'm going to do it on the road, which means it's all going to be done within a day or two. But what I'm at, there's going to be some reoccurring segments that I'm going to do over and over again over different episodes and I want to make some intros for those segments and uh, and and then once I make them you know I can just reuse them over and over again so it's, it, those are actually going to be the hardest part because there are things I need to do before I actually hit the road. One, one of them may be very difficult to do from the van. I just need to do it in advance. He says, laws to be followed, rules are for suckers. You're, you're pioneering. Do you? Yeah, you know, the reason, I, I, for, for many of you, for most of you, you probably drive all the time and, and it's, it's probably hard to, really hard, it seems crazy. Um, but, yeah, it's still psychologically the thought of a larger vehicle. Part of me then doesn't want to do it at all. Like, that's how much I, I, uh, I just hate driving and how much, just I know it's silly, but how just psychologically it's just so much easier to to imagine a smaller vehicle to start. 
But again, I'm not, I'm open to change still, but it, it, it's going to be a tough change to make psychologically. Blue says, I drive as little as I can. The sooner we have robot cars, take over the better. I cannot wait. Pythagoras says, driving is one of my favorite things to do, but I can appreciate where you're coming from. My son hates to drive. Yeah, like I said the you know the biggest the biggest thing is just not wanting to to cause somebody else pain by getting into an accident. That's the biggest thing. Uh, and then secondarily, even just parking, right? Parking in a bigger vehicle is more difficult. And um, you know the, the 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 thing that has just been controlling my life for you know for the last six years has been financial stress and uh, to have basically my entire life now in one tiny space where you know it's very unlikely that that there's going to be a, a natural disaster that's going to destroy this room that I'm in it's much more likely that something's going to go wrong in a vehicle that it's you know that it's still not that likely. I'm not going to be awake at night, I don't think, worrying about it. But, you know, there's accidents, there's robbery, whatever. Um, breakdowns. As you, you still put in the archives of show and safety deposit, but I haven't done it yet. I need to. I need to do that, yeah. Or at 996 shows, me. I think, I think I might, I was, I think I'm going to wait to celebrate it till that show in December. The thousand shows. I, Doug says ambulances don't usually get towed. Louis says they can leave out of the big trucks here and park wherever you feel like. <laughs> I I'm I'm a very you know it might I don't know what it seems like from your vantage point but I I'm not a very patient person in certain contexts. Um. I like parking. For me, hell would be driving around looking for a parking space. That just sounds, that's just, I've been in that situation and I hate it so much. Um, and I know the difference between a minivan and a full size van is not that, it's not that much of a difference. But anything that makes it easier to just pull over wherever I feel like it immediately uh, is very appealing. You just people send out awards for lesser milestones. You're saying it might be nice. Pre well, keep keep reminding me. Keep reminding me. And and maybe I'll maybe I'll do it. I mean, you know, truthfully, I, I numbers don't you know numbers don't mean anything really to me at all. You know, when you hit a follower count or a sub count or whatever. But I you know I do recognize that. It's something that's fun to celebrate. It's symbolic, and um, and so I definitely wanted. You know, that's why I was. I've been saying that and hyping up the December show. Um, so that you know, definitely use that as part of the voices. Don't get me started on parallel parking. Mom says that's why I'm saving up for the Emperor's new gift.
Pythagoras says, I'm usually driving a fire engine or a ladder truck. Parking isn't an issue. I kind of leave it where I feel like it. That's nice, yeah. I watched, a, I actually, I watched a video today on van security. And man, people have come up with some really clever, clever things to, that will really, that drastically improve your, your security. Just really creative ways to make it almost impossible to open doors. Um, like even if someone smashes the window, right? Then their their only option is they have to crawl through the window and then crawl out. But uh, I learned about it. I don't know any of this stuff. I learned about um, you can get the security film that you put over a glass that makes it so when they smash it, rather than shattering all over the place, it it sort of sticks together to makes it you know it just slows them down. And and I've I've had vehicles. I've had a rental car, two vehicles, I, well, a van, because I was in a band and our van got broken into and they smashed the window and I had a rental car, they smashed the window. You know, and glass is everywhere, it's in the car, it's just a mess. So it it's, adds insult to injury, you know, that you've got to clean up all this broken glass all over the place. <laughs> My blues is painted the van red for the ladder on the roof. Musically, we had a booby trap with a tubi or a tubi trap. Blue says that there's motion detected, tubi talks to them. That was one thing I saw that was interesting was um, um, these motion detection lights that it did only turn on if you're standing right next to the vehicle. Um, you know, obviously, if, if somebody wants to steal something, they will. They'll figure out a way, even if they have to destroy your vehicle to do it. But um, it's, you know, I think most of these things are just to, to discourage people. Um, make it more difficult. Make them want to break into the vehicle next to yours rather than, than yours. Because it's just, you know, it's an easier target. And he says, bulletproof glass makes it a hassle because the windows don't roll down. Hey, buddy, it's got work. Right, it's keeping honest people honest-ish. I mean, I'm not going to have that much in the vehicle that's going to be... easily smash and grab. I mean, I mean, the things that I'll have that, you know, would be camera and, and laptop, but they're not, you know, I'm not going to have any of the instrument in cases. So the average thief is probably going to see rust those rusty instruments and not think they're worth very much and they aren't <laughs> well the trumpet is not the melodica is not the the, the sax and the flute you know you could pawn those and get some money who says that was the advice i was given regarding bike walks you're not really preventing the determined thief slowing down the casual What I was thinking I would do, you know, one one option is I think I'll probably have my laptop with me 24 seven. Like I'll probably be too paranoid to, unless I'm doing some crazy hike, I'm gonna carry that everywhere. So that's not gonna get stolen. Um, and same thing with the camera, I'll probably carry that everywhere I go. Um, or are cameras small enough, it, I could probably come up with a hiding place that would be almost impossible for a thief to find, you know, with, with my build. But, you know, what I might, you know, I, I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but if I, what I could do is just have a broken laptop that doesn't look broken and a broken camera that doesn't look broken and just have them right out in the open. 
a gift for the thief. So they think, oh, we hit the jackpot. Look at that, a laptop and a camera. Grab that, think they've, they've scored. I don't know, is that a good idea? <laughs> but, you know, the, odd, the odds of getting broken into are not that high. None of these things are very... And I'm, I'm talking about it, but I'm not really that worried about it. I'm not... My biggest worries involve logistically being able to pull off this YouTube, these YouTube shows on the time frame that I want to. That's my biggest... <laughs> probably. Everything is, can I pull that off in the van, in a vehicle while dealing with everything. Still invite the bro. Oh, I wouldn't make it, I wouldn't put it in plain sight. Yeah, I, no, it'd be, you'd have to go into the van and then you would see the bag. No, no. The only windows will be in the front of the van, right? And um, I think I'm just gonna have nothing in there. So you, you won't be able to see into the back of the van. There'll be nothing of interest in the front. So you're just gonna have to hope that going in the back of the van, there's something worthwhile. I was thinking may, maybe in the front of the van, maybe I'll have a dog bed. And I don't know, maybe I'll have some decorations of German shepherds. So they'll have to they'll think, is there a German shepherd in the back of that van? Yeah, as he says, vinyl wrap with the van with dog poop pickup. We, we were talking about that as we were brainstorming different business names because you can get magnets that you can put on, you know, which a lot of people do rather than wrapping it and painting or something. So I'll just, I'll have different, I was planning to have different businesses for different contexts, right? Because you don't, you, it depends where you are. Because um, if I'm in the desert and it's a, it's a wrap of a, a you know, a dog pickup. People are going to not, they're, they know I'm not in the desert to, to clean up after dogs. They're going to think he's clearly camping, right? So, but that would work great in, in a neighborhood. So I can have different things for different contexts. He says, even if the logistics don't go in your favor, you're creative enough to make things work. If anyone can streamline chaos to order, it's you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, I appreciate the uh, the encouragement, but I like I said, I, I do very well when I am in control of my structure. I'm in control of my day, and unpredictable things don't happen um, in terms of life. I think I'm a, I do well with unpredictability in music, but uh, you know, it's it's uh, there's all in van life. There's always going to be weird things that happen, and so. Will I be able to learn how to adjust to that psychologically? I'm not, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, trying to talk myself down from doing this. I mean, the, the, something cataclysmic would have to happen at this point to change the trajectory of this, right? Um, so either cataclysmic or extraordinary would have to happen at this point. Um, more cataclysmic and extraordinary than anything has happened in my life so far. <laughs> so, but it, yeah. Um, so all of these fears, I'm going to have to figure them out because this is happening no matter what. Well, again, barring cataclysm or, uh, am I using the word cataclysm? Yeah, cataclysmic. He says, once you have a rolling schedule, those odd moments be your improv. It's just improv with new pants. I mean, you know, part of me is telling me that this is going to be no problem in terms of the YouTube stuff. Like, I'm gonna, it's going to be no problem to do the kind of what I'm imagining. But I'm always delusional in terms of how much time things take. You know, I always think things, I'm going to do things twice or ten times faster than I actually can. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know how delusional I'm being. I mean, I know that I've never seen any YouTuber do the, the amount of content that I'm imagining in the way it is. There have been daily vloggers for sure, um, but they're the daily vlogger, like the most famous one. I I only learned about him recently. I'd never seen any of his stuff. The most famous one is uh, Casey Casey Neistat, right? 
And it's, it's incredible what he did. But he's filming his life. And I'm sure he had to plan things. And he does some sophisticated stuff. I've seen a, you know three or four of his videos. The question is, can I essentially be making... I mean, it's, you know, not like Mad... Like, can I be doing a Conan O'Brien on Mad TV? Those... More that kind of thing. One person. I don't know. It seems... I, I feel like I... I don't know if it would be any good. But I feel like I, I, can, I can do it, but I don't know. I'm going to have to find out. But for sure, y'all are going to be extraordinarily helpful in in making this possible. I mean, I, you know, there's def it we. I think what I'm, you know, you were saying this media, I, I think I'm, if especially if I can, if the inter and the internet, I'm going to have enough bandwidth to do it. Um, I think it might be really good for me mentally to to do to do a short live stream every day, no matter what. Um, and, and if I can do it on a schedule, but it, it might be a little harder to do short things, you know, because I'll be moving around more. It'll be different than just a music show. But just just to, because it, it helps me so much to have to talk out ideas and, and it, it helps me get excited. Sometimes I have a hard time, you know, when I'm by myself, uh, it's it's harder to, to have the faith and the and the the when the going gets tough, you know, it's a lot easier when I'm talking with y'all. And then y'all always have great ideas and think of things I would never think of. I really need to stop, but enjoying hanging out. I mean, I'll just save all the post-show stuff for tomorrow so I can go straight to bed after we, after I wave goodbye. Lucy, it's great to explain the problem to someone else. Often I ask my own question in the process. I think it's, I think it's, you know, my inclination when I'm with other people, especially this kind of context, is to be positive, right? I'm not always, y'all know, I, I have my moments, my days, my shows when I'm clearly struggling. But in general, that's my inclination is to be positive and, and optimistic and, and, ex, and ex, find joy and excitement whenever I can. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not as able to do that when I'm by myself. <laughs> uh, so it's really nice when I have a problem or a challenge or things that I'm uncertain about to have to talk about them like this. Um, because it off, I'm often able to reframe how I'm looking at it and be more to become more determined or whatever, whatever I need to get through it. Does when does we get to be famous on some ETC merch? I, I just have to find the time to do it. It's 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 sort of a tedious process. It's not just upload and then boom. Um, so, but yeah, I, I keep keep if you keep reminding me, I will <laughs> I'll do it. These will be your fruit. Yeah, nice. I just need to get a couch. As is every TC nightlight solo fun one mile travel fifteen seconds of internet, yeah. 
Is Pythagoras still here? It's, it's Pythagoras who makes those. It's awesome, awesome gift to our community, what Pythagoras has done. Blues is a size. These are so many random different products. Oh, you are here? Oh, good. I'm glad you got, yeah. Well, and, and the thing, Blue, is that I have to individually sort of authorize them. It's They don't on by default, and they keep adding more. It's overwhelming. Like, for me, too. I mean, I just, I... <laughs> and, and they don't all work, in the, right? Because I don't see these products in advance, right? I just sort of have to... You know, sometimes the... Uh, the image isn't lined up right or it's the wrong size and so then you have to go in and resize it in their program and, and it works pretty well how it's designed but you know it's it's there's 50 60 products i have to go through just at, for one image i i don't i i i think the way they do it is very bad from a storefront point of view um because it's all jumbled together i think way it should work is you should see here's the artwork here's the designs and then you click on the design and then you see all the different options but it's just a mess the way they have it set up maybe they've changed i haven't looked in a while oh pythagor no no right you know whenever it whatever it makes sense My, where, I can't remember how, so I have my, my list, my brainstorming list, and then I also have, I also have um, bookmarks on, you you know, on, on I mean, not you, on, uh, bookmarks in my browser, which, I don't know, I must have bookmarked several hundred things, but then just for the, uh, that's more for van life stuff, but just for the show, where are we at? Let's see. How many items on this list at this point? Maybe it's not that many more than it was. I can't remember how to see the the, the count. But you know, I love I love I love new ideas and just being able to brainstorm and you know, often you know, ninety nine percent of my ideas never see the light of day. But it's still really satisfying for me to be in that headspace where I can just just throw down new ideas one after the other. That's 420. Some of y'all will like that number. 420 items on this, this uh, brainstorming list at this point. Hey, Brucos. Brucos is still here. <laughs> oh, Brucos arrived for the 420. Was that what that was for? <laughs> okay, truthfully, it was 421, but I knew y'all like, would like 420 better. <laughs> My ETC Kid brainstorming list is has 20, uh, well... It's two different lists. It's probably about 3,000. And that doesn't include all of the suggestions Chad has made. Which, where are we at in terms of suggestions? Let's see. <laughs> 30, 30, almost 3,500 suggestions from chat. Doug says, I'm sure there's some duplicates, yeah. Yeah, this is combined two things into one joint thing. You know why You know why that happened, As Asdi? Is my main etc. kid list got so big 
I just couldn't take it anymore. It was exhausting. And so I started a new list as part of my just general life list. I have a count, I have this, I use Checkfist, I love it. I've been using this program for 10 years. It just works the way my brain works. My brain works in tree form. Hey, Brother Wolf. We're just hanging out talking about van, the van stuff. Um, but, you know, at a point you get overwhelmed. I like tree structure because if you just have a few items, right, it looks like there's not much there, but then you can drill down so that you have a, your list starts with three things, but one of those things has 10 things in it. And then of those 10, one of those things has 5,000 things in it or something. I love tree structure. But anyway, even, but it got overwhelming, even that. So I created a new one as part of, an, yeah, that's why. It's not ideal. Oh, and then I also have within Tubi another list that I just write during shows. Whenever something happens, I just write it down there and, and rarely do I ever get to it, but it's there. And that has, I think, a thousand or 15, 1,500 things on it. <laughs> this is solve world hunger. But, I, I, you know, I, I'm not endorsing that I don't, you know, I'm not paid or anything, but for some of y'all might like this program, Check Fist. I don't know. That maybe there, I haven't found anything else like it. I'm sure there is. Um, but it's, it's like the word checklist, but instead of an L, it's a V. Hey, Hart. How's it going, Hart? Thanks for the raid. We're just hanging out. We're not doing any more music. We're just hanging out. Doug, though, I thought I heard Check Fist. That sounds cool, Check Fist. Um, I've been using checklists since I was in high school. I just sort of started doing them, and, and um, um, I, uh, I, I, I mentioned this recently. I, I was... As an adult, I was diagnosed with ADHD by a psychiatrist, um, and I was not seeking that diagnosis. I didn't think I had it. Everyone in my life, no one in my life thought I had it. Um, but as I learned more about what it is, it makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways. But, but, uh, but yeah, I think I started using checklists as a way, and I started counting hours in high school. It's something I... I, I go through phases, you know, I don't, I'm not, I mean, I, I would go through, fa I, I, there were long stretches of my life where I knew every, 168 hours in a week, I knew what every hour, hap what happened every hour. Um, and, and all of that, it's, you know, it's, it's been really, I think it was just my way to, uh, um, to make life work for me like find a way to, to deal with what's difficult for me. Um, yeah, because I, I, had, I had the conventional idea of ADHD, which is that you, uh, you know, people get distracted. They can't concentrate on things. But the reality is even, even kids that have that classic symptoms, they, can, they, they usually can concentrate on things. It's just not what the adults want them to concentrate on, right? They can play video games all day. Uh, or they can get into a show and watch it all day. And I think the reason that I, you know, people maybe didn't notice the ways in which I, I had some of these challenges was because, for whatever reason, the things that I wanted to focus on were generally things that adults valued. Um, right, adults valued someone who would practice, you know, practice music a lot in high school, and adults value. And I and I worked hard in school. Um, I think what people didn't notice as much, and became more of an issue as I got older, is how difficult it was for me, um, sort of more mundane things in life that I I need lists to make sure they happen. Um, I, I really struggle. If I'm not interested in something, it is agony to try to do it. 
Um, but there's a lot of important things in life that are not interesting. <laughs> you know? Um, so, anyway, yeah, lists. Oh, background music. <laughs> it didn't last very long, did it? Someday I'll fix it, maybe, so we can have it, so it just doesn't stop. Sorry about that. I really need to stop myself soon. But, you know, the, I'm not an expert in ADHD and, 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 you know, it's controversial. I don't know if I, you know, who knows. But I think you all can see pretty clearly the ways in which it's, when I get into an, a train of thought or when I get into a portion of the show, like the talk portion of the show, or this, right? When I get into a groove, I don't want to leave that groove. You know, I'll do a 35 minute song if I'm in the groove. I'll play for an hour or whatever, and I'll talk forever. Uh, it's very difficult for me to switch between activities. That's why doing the looping show is very, is very hard. It's exhausting, is having, it can be exhausting, is having to switch between so many different frames of mind over and over again. But it's been good for me, I think. It's been good for my brain to have to do that, to switch from the music, switch to talking, worry about the legit, worry about all this stuff. But it, it's, it does take its toll also. You just get radios. Yeah, I, I guess I could just, um, could I just, I guess I could just add a browser source, right? Let's try that. But then we're stuck with whatever's playing, which it might be garbage. <laughs> you know, I won't be able to change it. With this, I can at least skip to the next track. I mean, not, well, I do think some of it is garbage, but, uh, <laughs> but it's more some music is just not good background music. So we'll take the risk. Oh, let, me, let me see if I can get it to Let me see how fast I can. I think I just created browser source, right? Browser source, ETC Kid Radio. Oh, it's already there. I don't want to do this right here though, do I? Can you all hear that? Well, what was this you're saying a did you do isn't good background music? Is it a good volume? I didn't, I just, it's a good volume? Oh, cool. I mean, this song's fine. It's just, you know, it's, it's, there are times like a kazoo solo. It's hard to it's hard to you don't want to have a kazoo solo in the background when someone's talking. I mean, I don't know if you ever want a kazoo solo, but especially when somebody's talking. Blues is so many times at work and whistling at work and chilling and it <laughs> comes out. I mean, just because where I've been at mentally the last five years, you know, mo you know, the majority of the music I've made is it's it's relatively chill, you know. But then every once in a while, I'll throw the distortion on and so, <laughs> and I'll be screaming or who knows what. It does. It's very disconcerting, I imagine.
I think I can't remember if I said this. I know I said I'm leaning towards using a totally different name for YouTube, the YouTube show, and I'm still leaning that way. I think I'm gonna have a actual name as part of it, meaning a name you might actually call a human being, you know, a first name. It won't be my actual name though, but it will be a first name. Because I think, I think that actually, I think it'll be. Especially with the, if, since the, there will be a component of it that is sort of a, you know, a, a vlog, it's about me living in, in a van traveling. I think having an actual, I think, you know, having a name that people can use to refer to me as. I mean, y'all, you know, I don't think somebody right out of the gate is going to feel comfortable just saying, hey, kid, I think it's great on our channel. That works, you know. I'm totally happy with that, but um, I think a lot of people would feel more comfortable with an actual name. Fight the Hackers is my real name is Jim, short for gymnasium. <laughs> my parents had a weird sense of humor. <laughs> Are you serious? It really is. You're not kidding. It's spelled G-Y-M. You got to be kidding. Wait, wait, you've told me your name. Yeah, yeah, it's like, I don't remember being GYM. <laughs> you are kidding? See, I mean, I know some people with some crazy names. I mean, I have, you know, I, I have had many different names in my life. Um, the name I was born with was not crazy, though. Some of the names I've gone by, I know crazy not the right word, but... You know, I'm the only person in the world who has that the names that I've used. In a, you know. <laughs> but I've known people were, you know, I, I, I uh, I've, you know, people with hippie parents who named their kids some very inventive things. <laughs> Devol says, "My name is John." Let's not even start this conversation. You, your, uh, oh, your original username had John in it, right? Now I'm trying to remember what it was. John, Artist John or something, right? Is that right? I remember, what was it? Or you don't have to say, you don't have to give it away if you don't wanna. John the Artist, yeah, John the Artist. Where the wolf actually furiously types names into Google. There's nothing interesting, don't worry, there's nothing interesting to me out there, out, out on Google. Yeah. Oh, uh, Young Sauce, I don't, I don't do uh, reactions or stuff. I'm sorry about that. But if you want to send it to me on Discord, I, I always like hearing people's music, but I don't do it on stream. Doug just met someone named Loyal. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've got a weird thing about names. I mean, I mean, you know, I, you know, it's, it's totally, it's not, I mean, I'm an idealist. And the thing about being an idealist is many of your ideals are absolutely and completely impractical. Just don't work. They, they it's not going to work in a real world. And my, you know, ideally we wouldn't have names, but that's completely impractical. Obviously I recognize that. I'm not a fool. I'm just an idealist, which is very close. It's a fine line between idealism and foolishness and naivete. But my compromise for myself has been I've had different names in different contexts. And I always grandfather people in. If someone knows me as one name, that they can, you know, they don't have to change. They can call me that if they want. That's forever. But, you know, to, to, to explain myself a little better why I feel that way is what I don't like about names is that names function as a label. They function as a shortcut. 
Um, and that's very useful in life, right? I mean, if, if, if you want someone to pass you the butter, but there's no word for butter, and there's a lot of things on the table, it's a lot easier to say, pass me the butter, than having to say, try to point at this thing when there's other things already there, right? It's the same thing with names of people. It, it's obviously so much easier to have, a, to have names. Because if, if somebody does something and you want to tell someone, hey, did you know that so, you know, if there's no name, how do you communicate that? Right? So that, there's a usefulness there. What I don't like is that we are not butter. <laughs> we are not a fixed object that never changes. Um, we all, whether we, whether we want to admit it or not, change every single second we exist. You know, because we're older, at very, at very, we, our body has changed, at very least. And we have a second more of experience in life. We are different than who we were a moment ago. And what I don't like about names is that I think that they, we can forget that other people are changing. And because we have this one thing that they are, their name, it's easy to sort of not let them change, let them be something different, let them grow or whatever, transform themselves. So that's why I don't like names. But I also live in the real world and I'm not such a fool that I'm gonna pretend that, that it's possible to exist without names. It isn't. But you see in this channel, what is, what, is one of the, what is one of the things you can do? Say my name. You can change what I call you. Buddy says, after supper this evening, I guarantee you I'm about 15% butter. Amvu says, we need self-driving cars and telepathy, yes. Devol says, one of my best friends is named Blue. Real name on his, his birth certificate. Mew says, Karis won his amazing song about uselessness of names called Palm and Fist. And the opening line is, what's the difference between the palm and the fist? If the palm is there, does the hand not exist? Hey, Fuegos. Fuegos Word, how are you? I mean, I'm, I was supposed to have ended an hour or two ago, but I... Because it's past my bedtime, but I don't know. I'm I'm still dragging my feet and hanging out. So I don't know. I might go another minute. I might go another twelve hours. Who knows? Oh, the old big child. So I like the idea of be able to change a name within reason. Um. You know, I, I think also, I, I know for a lot of people, it's really meaningful to be able to give someone a name as a parent. And for many ch people, it's very meaningful that their parent gave them a name. And I, I appreciate that. I mean, I appreciate, because I really value the importance of relationships in life. So I've, I, I appreciate that. Um, but for me personally, um, I didn't like the idea of having to just accept what was placed upon me. Um, I mean, I first sort of rebelled against names when I was four, <laughs> four years old. Um, my parents called me by my first and my middle name. And they were both, they're both short words. Uh, so it's not like a crazy, it's only three syllables or four, three syllables, but I said, no, you can only call me by my first name. You can't call me by both. That was my first, first thing with names, four year, three or four years old. But, you know, later in, later in life as an adolescent, I had some experiences that really brought home how the world generally wants you to be one thing. You know, and and you feel this especially as an adolescent, right? Because there's subcultures, and you're either a jock, or you're a nerd, or you're a band, or 
you, you, you're not allowed to be multiple things. And, um, and I think I, I really felt like I was in prison. And, and a name became a symbol of that, of the, the, this name, this label of being one thing. And, and, and being able to you know, change my name and use different names in different contexts. You know, I had one name, I, you know, I have one name for the government. Very, very few people call me by the name the government has. <laughs> Pythagoras says you're consistent. You and I had this conversation on Discord. Yeah, I mean this is this is a fundamental part of who I am. This is you know ever since, um, you know I'm pretty old to be doing silly things with names, right? I mean, someone doesn't just spontaneously in their in middle age start doing weird names. It's <laughs> this has been me since a, since childhood. But again, you know, I, I, there are people who, who are given a name and they love it. And I respect that. I, I, you know, I, I've, my own idiosyncrasies, eccentricities, I, I really try, I'm sure I don't always succeed, but I really try not to, to place, to, to, to try to apply them to other people. You know, it, everyone has to make, have their own, find their own way through life and, um, And I, I have very much struggled in my time through life, so no one should be looking to me for guidance. <laughs> Three blues from the sun, so I only got the middle name when something really bad had happened. It wasn't my fault, I swear. Big houses should be possible to change your name at certain important stages of maturity in life. Yeah, at one point I thought it, you know, I, what I imagined was that it would be a, it, it's sort of a, you know, I didn't, I didn't grow up in a tradition, well, I guess maybe in some ways I did, but you know, many religious traditions have a, a coming of age ritual, you know, Judaism you have, I mean, I'm no expert, but you know, you have your, your bat mitzvah, bat mitzvah, um, and that's a symbol, you know, it's a big event as a 12 year old, or is that 12 or 13, I think. Um, so, you know, that's, I could see that being a time, but you know, 12 and 13 year olds are gonna name themselves, what are, you know, what kind of, I mean, I would love it. I personally, I would love it if it's like, the, the kid was named Bob and now he's named, at 12 he decides, no, I'm, now I'm, I'm, uh, you know, um, rocket ship matrix call me rocket ship matrix and I'll, i'm ready hey rocket ship matrix but probably most people would not be psyched about letting 12 year olds name themselves <laughs> so maybe it's maybe it's just an adult i don't know but again i mean most of people in all of human history i think have been perfectly happy with the way things work so i'm not saying that i'm not suggesting we change <laughs> It's just my own way of making sense of life. Media says I would have named myself Peter Parker or Spider-Man. Doug runs with antelope. Is that is that the name you would choose? Ruka says I can't imagine what that would be like for teachers. <laughs> Although I have to say, if anyone should be understanding of it, it should be teachers. You know? Um, I think, because I think what makes a good teacher is being able to adapt to kids being very different and not trying to force one, um, one way of being onto everybody. But I agree, if you've got a class of 30 kids <laughs> and they're changing their name every week, well, that's when you've got, you have, you make them wear name tags, you know? You, you gotta wear name tags in that situation. <laughs> we'll have to ask Allegra what she thinks of this idea. She'll probably say it would be a disaster. Doug, so at least we have names and not numbers. 
Big Chalice is having to choose a reasonable name for what, say, five years with Elton Sounds. So, you know, it's, what's funny is that this was not true until, what, uh, 20 years ago or so? But now, almost everybody has to come up with another name. And often many, right? Usernames. And there's some big downsides to this, right? The anonymity, the, the, an, the way in which anonymity gives people, seems to give people license to say horrible, horrible things. But on the positive side of it, I, I think that, that anonymity, the ability to have different names, I don't know, I don't know if, you know, maybe, I don't know if any of y'all have felt this, you know, being able to go into an online community and not be in, encumbered by the baggage of who you are in your real life. You know, what? who knows, maybe something bad has happened in your life, maybe people have decided you're this person, but you go to this online community, you make this new username, and you can redefine who you are. Um, and some people do that in very negative ways and use it you know, to do all the horrible things they wanna do, but I think other people use that as an opportunity to explore new sides of themselves that they never would be able to explore in their normal life. Um, and, and that, I think, illustrates one of the, one of the power of self-naming. You know, wedding, saying, I'm, I'm more than this one thing. But that said, I'm bad enough being myself. I'm sure I've failed misery and pretending to be someone else. Well, I think what I, I'm not really saying pretending to be someone else. I'm, I guess what I'm saying is that I think, and not, I think some people have an extraordinarily strong sense of self that's very rooted and unchanging. But I think many people are different in different contexts, right? Like many people are going to act differently with their parents or with their kids than they are with going to with a peer. And it's not that one is fake and not real. It's that we are different. In, I think most of us are different in different contexts. And, 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 but, and it can, you know, I don't know if anyone's had this experience where you, you're hanging out with your parents and then you invite your friends and now you have your friends and your parents. And some people are the same with everybody, right? But some people, that's a tough change because I'm not sure exactly what I'm saying, but. I mean, this is I'm pretty much what you get IRL as well, just as loud, just as weird. Through Boots and Sons, with any group of people, you only show a bit of yourself. I mean, I, I, I am the way y'all know me when I'm in groups of people that I know. I am not this way outside of that, those contexts. And it's not that I'm being fake, it's just that context changes, for me it very much changes the different parts of myself that I'm gonna access. Uh, it's, it's like with why I play different instruments. I do not play different instruments because I want to play different instruments to, to be a multi-instrumentalist or show off. That's not why I do it. I play different instruments because they allow me to express different parts of myself. I cannot express the same things on flute that I can on trombone. I just, I can't. Um, and I think it's in the same way I feel like different, you know, and, and, and what I love too is I love how different people will change how I am with them. Right, because they're, if, for example, if you have one friend that loves um, Monty Python and humor and all that, you have another friend that loves just loves poetry, loves being quiet, loves thinking about different things. You might yourself like both of those things, right? But you're going to modulate your behavior most in most cases, at least a little bit based on the person you're spending time with. Um, 
if if you're with the person who loves talking about poetry and and quiet things you're probably not going to be quoting monty python all the time you might be <laughs> but you know i think even the person who who feels like they don't modulate their behavior i think it's almost impossible not to modulate your behavior at least a tiny bit based on who you're with because it's not a one direction it's it's two directional right if you're only monologuing all the time then then no you probably don't modulate your behavior but as soon as you listen to somebody and respond to them i think there's going to be some change right based on the person you're with and then you add two people and then suddenly it gets more complicated what if you're hanging out with both of those people the, the poetry person and the bonnie python person what then and then you have somebody else who isn't in either of those things who's hanging out with you now who's who loves sports it becomes this complex you know every person you add adds to the complexity although the funny thing is that what i find and this is not true on twitch but i think often in social situations when you have too many people you end up talking about only mundane things right because everyone's so different it's just the most <laughs> lowest common denominator the weather or the food you're eating not that you can't have fascinating conversations about the weather and the food you're eating but those are not very fascinating when they're just being spoken about because it's the only common ground you all can come up with you all happen to be eating so you're going to talk about your food Three Boots in the Sun says, my YouTube watch history is a great example. Monty Python skateboarding. I don't skate, by the way. Sudoku, board gaming. It's all over the place. I, I think a lot, I think most of us are like that. Where, we, where if we really look at our interests, they're pretty varied. And it's unlikely that we'll find too many people that exactly match up with all of our interests. Um... Fuego source as you become more guarded with more people, I think. Levels of vulnerability change. Oh, and oh, I did. I missed Brother Wolf's good night. Brother Wolf's priority gone, but good night, Brother Wolf. Big, oh, Big Charles is talking about food sometimes can be stressful if you'd mentioned pineapple pizza. Yeah, I just, I don't feel passionately at all about pineapple pizza one way or the other. I'm probably not going to choose it. I'm not going to order it. But if, if someone says we've got pizza and it's pineapple pizza, I'll be psyched because it's pizza. So, yeah, I... I Big Childs, is there people who get found? I know, I know. I've I've heard, I've I've been around it, but yeah, I I I am either way I'm fine. I care about raisins, that's it. Oh man, I'm now an hour past my bedtime. Rugas, that's my view on it too. What are other things? Well, uh, besides, we don't want to talk about the real big things that, that people fight wars and, and, you know, fight over, <laughs> right? We don't want to get into those uh, political things, religious things. But any, any, what are some other examples of things that people get passionately, just passionate about and almost come to blows, but it's absurd, Right, it's it's absolutely ridiculous that anyone would get pass be pa that passionate about it. I mean, you could argue that religion and politics also are that, but okay, we'll, we'll we won't talk about that. Devolt is Mac versus PC. That's a good one. Uh, how about Star Trek versus Star Wars? People are pretty passionate one side or the other. Tend to be on those. I. I I could go either way. I think I have more of an emotional connection to Star Wars because I just, I remember seeing those movies as a kid and I didn't really watch Star Trek as much. But I, again, I'm, I'm pretty whatever. 
As it says, gift for Jif, yeah. So, oh, sports. Yeah, sports, of course. Sports, yeah, people riot. Muty says Xbox versus P PS. Stop crying over games. Blue says Star Trek versus Star Wars is a tough call. Most fans like both. The trouble comes when you ask people to rank them. trying to think my opinion I would say um, just this is my personal opinion okay nobody get riled up um, I think for me that just there's something something about the combination of the characters and the storytelling um star wars wins but intellectually star trek way more than like in terms of I interesting ideas and thinking about the future and yeah I, I think star trek to me is so far beyond star wars cerebrally but i don't i just don't feel as connected to the characters like i did with star wars and that might just be because i grew up with them I had Star Wars toys. Um, but, you know, I mean, even just the way in which how ahead of his time Star Trek was in terms of just the diversity of the crew, right? I mean, that's, it's incredible. I mean, it shouldn't be incredible. It should have been normal, but for the time it was incredible. And, and I just love that optimistic look at the future, that, that in the future we will move beyond our differences. You know, the height of the Cold War, right, didn't they, they have, is it, Chekhov is Russian, right? Uh, at the height of, 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 you know, the civil rights movement. Um, Sponge shows his apples and frangies. Blue says Star Wars meeting episodes four to six. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I have not seen all the prequels. I saw the first one, and I that was enough. Um, and then I haven't seen. I saw the first of the uh, the new ones, and. I was like, how many times are we going to blow up the Death Star? Are we just going to do the same story over and over and over and over again forever? Is it the third time or fourth time we're going to blow up the Death Star? C come up with an original idea. <laughs> I really don't feel that passionate, but I'm, I sound like I am. I don't really care, but... but It did seem that first... The first movie back, whatever... What was it? The first one the first Disney one or whatever, it just felt like they were checking off a list of things that fans would want to see. You know, let's, let's just satisfy the fans, give them what they want, not try to push this story forward, not try to do anything. It, it just did not feel very original at all. But again, I don't feel bad. I don't really care. <laughs> see, this is something... You have to be careful about it. If you're able to be, pa and why you need to be very wary of people who are passionate about stuff. Passion is a skill in a way. To be able to express yourself passionately, if you've never done it, it can be hard to really convey to someone that you care about what you're saying. But once you have experienced speaking passionately, the problem is, is you can fall into that way of speaking about things you don't really care about and sway people in ways that you never intended or sway people in ways you intend for nefarious reasons, right? A cult leader or a politician who knows how to speak passionately can be extraordinarily manipulative. Um, so I think our inclination is to always trust passion, trust it when someone gets emotional, and, but people can be emotional on demand who are skilled at it. 
Um, Lucas' last movie is, is pretty disappointing. Yeah. You know what I have seen that I, I've enjoyed is I watched some of The Mandalorian. And it's not ambitious, right? But it at least feels like they're exploring this universe and not just trying to do the same thing over and over again. But... Bosses is quite good, yeah. I, th I think one of my favorite things about Star Wars was the world building, right? That the, there were the, just, I think George Lucas did a really good job of imagining um, this, the universe that Star Wars is in. Um, He says, Baby Yoda creeps me out. Brugas says, Can't boy people with the word baby. Oh, he got auto modded. Creeps and baby. The combination. Brute Ghost, you, you, you're still, you're modding on, um, are you still modding on a couple streams? And you you mod for some other big big music streamers, right? Well, my question is, um, um, assuming you do, is your sense just just a couple streams? Is your sense that um, there's a lot less nasty stuff in chat than there was four years ago? I mean either because of a culture shift or because of these tools? Or do you think it's about the same from a mod point of view? I mean, granted, a couple of streams probably that has more viewers now than they did, but. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're in a situation where we're just not getting new people. The upside of that is that we're also not getting trolls, <laughs> you know, <laughs> in chat. I, I never, I don't even, I don't look, I don't look at this stat. I've probably only looked at it in, in the higher history of the show, I probably looked at it like five times, but tr Tubi tracks how many new people come into the stream. Um, you know, log into chat, not even necessarily write a message, but, and it is, it is so few now. It just, so, so astronomically low, the number, that, that's not a really good way of saying it, astronomically low, what does that even mean? Do I, do I still have access to this? Let's see, shows, where is it? Stats, is that it? We had a show last week. We had three in a five hour show, four, four hour show or whatever it was, three people logged into chat who had never logged in before, three people. Less than one an hour. That's that's what the reality of 
streaming on Twitch now. I mean, that's about as bad as it gets, obviously. You know, I mean, most of the time it's probably like 10 to 15. Um, but when I, when I f first started streaming, I'm looking at those early, you know, I started tracking this in November, I guess, of 2016. Um, it was, you know, it'd be generally sort of low would be 20, but there'd be oftentimes, you know, you know, 50, 60, uh, and then a raid, the big, that first couple streams raid, that first couple streams raid, November 30th, 570 first time. And then in the days that followed, 89 first appearances, 94, 46, 36, 50, 70, 446. That was another, that was another, it was another couple streams raid. 61 first timers, 40, 77, 47. Rukas says, only time we have to ban anyone is during front page or large foreign language hosts. That's encouraging. That's that's really that's really cool. That because you know that to, to have that many viewers, I, I think that says a lot about a couple streams, just the vibe, and it says a lot about um, just the music category. I can't imagine that a gaming streamer that has a thousand viewers ex has an experience like that. But yeah, yesterday's show, 11 first appearances. And Thursday's eight. I, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't do the stats till, I don't know about today, it doesn't do it till the end of the show. But this is not people who talk even, this is people who, they might have only watched for 30 seconds, who knows how long they watch, you know? Well, Tubi knows, but. <laughs> Media says, trolls respect the arts. So, you know, I, in, the, in the context of the reality of where we're at with new viewership, I mean, I, it's, it's incredible we're still able to do what we've done so far. Like, you know, it's because we're very fortunate to have a core group, core group of folks that support most shows and then I think it's also, I'm, you know, the benefit of being on here five years is we, you know, we get people back who uh, come back every, you know, they might only watch a show once every three months, but we've got enough people who do that, that we still, we're not at, you know, 10, we're not at five viewers, which we probably will be in <laughs> by January, but. Some of y'all, I'm grateful to anyone who sticks sticks with me through the uh, through the winter, the winter of ETC Kid. And he says, is it different for female versus male music streamers? Oh, I'm sure it's much worse for female. The stuff they have to deal with is is horrific. What what women have to deal with on the internet is horrific. I've had to deal with a few bad things in my time as a streamer and it is nothing compared to what m most women have to deal with on a daily basis on Twitch. It's just awful. Right, look like what Brucos just said, even with ACS most of the time all bands are related to comments about Ali. It's just it's just disgusting. You know, and it's it's just you have bitter, 
bitter streamers on Twitch saying that women have it so much easier on Twitch. No, I no idea what they have to deal with. I think, you know, what a lot of people don't realize, they see these successful women on Twitch and they, and, and they don't realize that one of the reasons they notice them is because there's so few. They stand out because there's so few of them. And yes, there are certain categories where there are more of them. Um, but it's only seems like there's a lot of them because you notice them because there's so few of them. I'm ranting. Rugus is lucky there are a lot of good moderators out there in the music streams. Yeah. Music is in creative. There was this lady who streamed with a mask to make her art the focus and still 30% of chat was coming on to her. Yeah. Pythagoras says, my son is a mod for lots of music streamers. It's probably what he sees. You know, I think, I think, um, I, I can't speak to their experiences, but I'll say for myself, the toughest things I've had to deal with have not been in chat. It's the DM stuff. It's stuff that happens outside of chat that's the worst. Because in chat, you know, in some ways, it's a little easier because you have you know, you're with everybody else when it happens, um, and there's always at least a good number of people who are gonna that have you know are supporting you. You've got your mods who are gonna be that first line of defense, you know. Um, but DMs, those, you know. Three blues from the sun says. Wasn't that a Black Mirror episode of Facebook Moderator Goes Insane? I, I haven't seen that, but I can imagine. Pythagoras says, I think that's the experience. He's fond of saying Twitch is supposed to be a performance platform. It's not a dating site. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the, the difficult, you know, you have somebody who's really lonely and probably has poor social skills. And then here you have this streamer that's looking right at them. And, and... You know, especially a lot of, you know, streamers that are streaming 50 hours a week or streaming a ton, you know, people who are in, viewers who are in not a good psychological place, it's, it's a dangerous, dangerous combination right there to have that much, to feel like you have that much access, but not really, while struggling I th I so I I so prefer um, a smaller community. I think it's just it makes all of these things much easier to deal with, and it's just such a better for me as a streamer. I think it's such a better experience. I mean, I've never been in a position. <laughs> I've never you know I, I'm never gonna be a. No, even if everything aligns, uh, you know, I'm never going to be a thousand person stream, let alone a 500 or 300 probably. Um, but, uh, it's not appealing. It's not appealing. You know, I'm, I'm not always good about 
I miss messages and obviously and I talk too much but I I I feel like I'm able to develop a connection with you know anybody who at least is here a fair amount and, and writes at least more than a few messages um, it's it's really cool where I I know I peep I see people you know maybe it's a personality just for twitch but you know I, um, I feel like and I, that's what's great about smaller stream is that I feel like everybody in chat is to me they're they're three-dimensional um, you know unless they never say anything and which then it's just their username but uh, yeah I you know I didn't I did not I I was glad that I had the opportunity to do the front page shows because it helped a bunch of people discover our show and our community but um, I I didn't love the experience frankly I just felt so I just felt very disconnected you know, and I was amped up, but uh, and I did I did a lot. I've done six front page, six six I think. Use a chick. Music the chick. Thanks for the raid. It's good to see. You. We're just hanging out, and I I so was supposed to end two hours ago. I might end at any moment, but it's wonderful to see you. How is your stream, use a chick? I don't know if you've heard me, Jake. I have lots of big news. Sorry to everyone who has to hear me say my news over and over and over again. Um, yeah, shout out for music. Thank you, Brucos. Were you playing bass tonight? Are you playing your game and just chatting? But yeah, music chick. I'm I'm planning on taking the the uh, the show on the road. I'm gonna move into a van next year. Oh, thanks, Devolta. Oh, it was great to see you. Yeah, I'll, I'd love to see you again too. Yeah, take care. Well, we're, we're gonna uh, music chick. We're gonna have a, a. I'm planning a big show for December. It's going to be uh, celebrating five years on Twitch. I mean, I'm already past five years, but it's going to be the, uh, you know, uh, thousand plus shows. Um, I'm going to be debuting this secret project. No one knows what it is. I've been, I put thousands of hours of time into. Um, and I'm going to be launching a Kickstarter to, to raise funds for the, uh, the van. I'm gonna debut this first, the first episode of the, this YouTube show, this separate from this that I'm gonna be starting. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's gonna be a, a big reunion for uh, for all the different generations. Cause you know, we, we certainly have some people who have been here, um, you know, who are still regulars from the beginning, but, but we definitely, there's different, you know, uh, there's lots of overlap over the years, but I'm hoping as many people as possible will come back for this one show. Um, I don't know the date yet, but it's going to be in a. Um, it's going to be most likely in December. But I'm going to try to. I'll, I'll, it'll be all over Discord, social media. I'm going to reach out directly to as many people as I can, without getting banned as a spammer by Twitch or Discord and But you're playing a, a gas station was it a gas station simulator? You've written 36 originals this year? That's so exciting. 
are you going to release an album or are you can write you could you could release that's that's four albums three or four albums you did you did earlier this year oh that's that's congratulations congratulations if if you remember um uh send me a send me a link on discord if if it's available if it's something that i can check out Good night, Pythagoras. It's not 2 a.m. where I am, but it's, I usually go to bed an hour and a half from now. I'm getting tired too. But it's, I was glad to see you, Pythagoras. Get some good rest. I'll thank, thanks, Music the Chick. It's not a good look, it's leaning back. You need to, you need to fill the frame, you know, you need to. Yes, that's a good amount of headroom. It's decent. Slouching though looks just just not good, especially that. That looks really <laughs> that looks silly. Um, I have to get get have to get used to it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be such a different setup. The van. So. So what y'all see, I'll see, I'll be, I'll be here. You'll see uh, the two seats behind me, and then the windshield. Music six, you know what's crazy? My youngest was eight years old when he started watching. Now he's thirteen. He's grown up. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Man, I've been on Twitch a long time, haven't I? Five years. Um, is your was it your youngest who was playing flute or the one just older? And 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 part two are they if so, are they have they changed to a different instrument? The, the older one, still playing flute or or moved to something different? And is the younger one playing an instrument now? The youngest one's playing trombone, nice. But the older one stopped playing flute. Well, you know, you never know. She, she might, she might pick it up, pick it up later. You never know. And, and that experience, she'll keep it, you know? It's great thing about music is that it affects you in ways beyond just playing music. I, there have been so many people I've, who've said it over the years in our chat how, about, you know, how they, they're older now, they're, you know, they're whatever, 30 or 40 or 50 or whatever. And they're picking up an instrument again that they haven't played since high school. And, um, yeah, we I found at least in the in, in in the sort of major structural ways, I I you know the skills sort of stay, the polish. You lose, um, but you know. So I, the instrument I was reached the highest level at was trombone, and uh, and um, you know I would I'd be laughed out of an audition now uh, if I were trying to audition for a you know a classical gig or jazz thing, but. I still have the skills to play music. I don't have the skills to maybe get certain kinds of music jobs, but in the in the main ways.
loses that stare, Wass. Well, no, it's it's not. It's just, um, I mean, if you know, when when you're um, if an or an orchestra and a jazz ensemble, there's it's roles, right? And, and if you need somebody that can jump six feet, or you know, I mean, I switched to a sporting analogy, but. Um, you're playing written parts. You, if you can't play it, you can't play it. There's no way around it. Um, they're going to hire the person who can play it. So, but that's why I am such an evangelist for improvisation and, and making your own, even if you don't improvise, making your own music is that you, if you're in control of what you're creating, whatever your skill level you have at the moment, you can use. That's not true if you're trying to fill a role with somebody else. That's just, you know, uh, it's just sort of reality. But I think, I think, I, I, I've loved playing roles. And I've loved being in jazz ensembles. I've loved my experience playing in orchestras. I've been a role musician in, in other bands, rock bands as well. And I love that. That's, those are great experiences. But... I think the experience of making your own music that, that is your thing, 100% your thing, is the most valuable, I think, experience. Because you can take all those things in yourself, no matter what they are, and use them. But if you're playing in, in a certain kind of, you know, in a specific ensemble and you're playing a role, and you're playing the happiest music in the world, and that's that's what it is, but you're feeling utter rage, you can't use that rage unadulterated. <laughs> or vice versa, if you're if you're playing in a heavy metal band that's all about rage, and you have all this joy, but but when you're doing your own thing, you, you know, wherever your skill level is, you can make it work with what you have to say. Now, there's obviously, and I've been very, I've verbalized this myself, even in that context, there will be frustrations. I am frustrated about things with my instruments, um, but I still, I still make music no matter what, um, right? I, I still do it. You know, it's, it's not a great feeling to have been you know, metaphorically on the trombone back in the day being a, approaching NBA level on the instrument and in some ways at NBA level. And now, in terms of pure technical skill, I'm back in high school. Um, that's not a great feeling in the abstract, but I still make music on that trombone no matter what. Because that ultimately that's a superficial concern of mine. It's not superficial. I, I think where it's not superficial is that it's frustrating when I hear something that I can't, that I want to play that I can't. That's not superficial. But um, if I try to convince myself that the only thing of value is what I can't do, that's where the big problem is, right? The failure to see that, that what you can do still can have tremendous value. Hey, oil change. Who says, I hear you on multiple levels. I've loved making music this past year with your inspiration. I'm also blessed to have a new job where they're willing to invest in people. I've missed you too, Music the Chick. I've missed you too. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you know, music, because you're a streamer too, and, and anyone who's a streamer, and, and music chicks, you've been streaming as long or longer than I have, right? Um, one of the realities of being a music streamer, 
about being a streamer who has a long lifespan on Twitch is you are going to have many, many people who are part of your community, who you care about, who have been part, who have been huge parts of your life through ch in chat, stop watching as much or stop watching completely. And, um, and uh, you know, for me, it's not, I don't, from an ego point of view, I don't, that doesn't bother me at all. I mean, they have, I'm glad whatever's happening in their life, I hope it's good. I hope that they're, you know, so I don't, that doesn't bother me from an ego point of view. I, I'm sick of myself. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 you know it's it's uh, you miss you miss people with the I you know you feel their absence and it's a really and it's always I, I think y'all see it how happy I get when I you know when I get emotional <laughs> Doug says we're allowed to stop watching that you know I I think that might be the biggest thing I'm excited you know why I'm so ex I'm excited to have this show I you know I'm not into I'm not really into numbers like I said I don't really care about five years a thousand um, shows or whatever five whatever those numbers they don't mean anything to me because for me I try to treat every song as my first song every show is my first show I try to I don't always succeed but um, but I think my hope that 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 a lot of people will come back that haven't been around in a while and I'm sure most of the people that come back for that show, I might not never see them again, or I might not see them for six months. But just to have everybody back, you know, we we need an event for that to happen. That's the only way that that could happen is to have some event. Music chick says I've kind of made some revelations this year. I'm in the people over content. Yeah. Music Chicks says, I've been involved in a lot of projects that have really opened my eyes about what it is I want to get out of being on the Twitches. Yeah, I'm thinking about Doug, we're allowed to stop watching. Yeah, uh, hopefully this van thing is going to make it... It's like, oh, now there's something new. I can't stop now. <laughs> Kid keeps changing it up. Have I eaten? Um, I don't eat after shows anymore. All right, I just, I'll eat some almonds or something. Yeah, and it's been better for me. It's uh, healthier. But thank you for... Thank you. Thank you for asking me to... But what I've what I've sort of found, Muti, is I I have um, I'm just I eat a huge meal at lunch, huge meal, I probably three quarters of my calories are at lunch. I have my oatmeal in the morning, right, and then just before the show, I'll eat I'll eat something, and then I'll eat some almonds after the show. Boo, uh, Boo says, will to be produced in a new format? Yes. Yeah. I'm planning on bringing Tubi's body. <laughs> that sounds horrible, but I'm planning on bringing Tubi's body in the van. Um, it's my plan for Tubi online is that I'm going to actually have a computer somewhere, not in the van where Tubi is. So that theoretically we can keep doing radio. I I don't I don't know if. I mean, from a purely financial point of view, I don't know if it makes sense at this point. Radio. Uh, I I mean I haven't really checked, but you know I I think we we're we're not even getting enough viewership for to qualify for a prior affiliate, right? But in theory, I'm going to try to keep keep it going. Google Cloud Services. I can't run FileMaker Server on Google Cloud Services. I could theoretically, um, uh, I could theoretically, there are FileMaker servers I could hire, but the thing is Tubi actually does a lot of stuff outside of FileMaker Server. So it would take a huge amount of work to convert it. So I think to start, to start, um, 
I'll just have the Mac Mini at somewhere permanent. Which is going to be a hassle because, I mean, I'm still going to have to do a bunch of changes to how Tubi works. Because FileMaker Server, for a lot of the things that I'm doing, theoretically, I could have a local version of FileMaker accessing FileMaker Server from the van. But some, some things would be really slow, extraordinarily slow. So what I'll probably do is have most of the difficult things that to be, I, I might, for anything difficult, I'll just screen share um, to the server. Things where I need to see a display, right? Obviously, if it's just running code, I'll just, send, I'll just tell the server to do it. But there are things where I need to actually get a response and I don't want to have to write tons of new code to display it in a web browser or something. All right. I mean, there aren't that many things that I need to run locally, really. Basically, what I need to run locally is Tubi needs to tell Ableton Live and Logic what sounds to load. And then, and then the screens and then the screens for the show. But those are already all, Tubi's already making HTML screens. So what I'll do is I'll, instead of using a local host, I'll just use the, you know, I'll just have, grab them off, you know, yeah. But it's still, it's gonna take me some time to make these changes. It's, me just a squeeze torrent Tubi so it can have sleepovers. I I I had meant to have Tubi back on the show this week, but I, I ran out of energy. But Tubi's right there in front of a green screen. I got the camera and the light. It's not perfect, but it's fine for now. You'll see some, you know, you'll see some bad um, chroma keying. I'm not psyched about current, Tubi's current body though. The shoulders look wimpy. I need to get, uh, Tubi's older sh shoulders used to be very, very straight. Oh, look how long I've been streaming. <laughs> it means I've been streaming, it means that camera's been on for eight hours. Look how horrible it looks. Look how bad it looks once it stops recording. Did you notice, look how horrible, I look like I'm, it's awful. I don't know. I just, I'm not actually using the data on the cameras, but these cameras, for some reason, they have to be in record mode to be at the highest quality. I'm going to turn off. I, I bet I really should end. <laughs> this is bad. I'm going to mess up my time tomorrow. This is when I get migraines is when I mess up my sleep schedule or my eating. I have to stop. We're not going to raid because I, I, I really just need to stop. And there's always that obligation. I just need to, I need to turn off the stream and leave <laughs> and go straight to bed. Um, Very, oh wait, did, are you about to raid? Very handsome, Billy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm ending, I'm ending, yeah. Thank you, I don't know if you're about to raid, but thank you so much, yeah. Thank you so much. I wish you, I don't know, your, your chat probably can't hear me, I don't know if they can, but if, if, you, if, you, if you have me on your screen right now and people can hear me, um, I just want to, Very handsome, Billy is an incredible, they can't, okay, good. Very Handsome Billy is an incredible um, musician on Twitch, and 
I always love seeing him and I'm honored that he would raid. But yeah, I've been eight hours and I, I'm going to go to bed. But thank you so much for answering, Billy. Thank you so much. Hopefully, when I get, I'm, I think you heard I'm gonna get, a, I'm gonna take the show on the road in a van. Uh, I'm gonna somehow downsize everything. I'm hoping I can eventually turn the van into a boat, and I'll sail to New Zealand, and we'll, we'll we can, uh, if you're up for it, we can, uh, we can jam. I might end up in New Zealand someday. Some, I, well, very handsome Billy knows this, but I lived there for a while. I loved it. I could totally see. I could totally see ending up in New Zealand. But yeah, um, if there's anyone here who, who doesn't know Very Handsome Billy, please go and follow, follow him right now. Um, yeah. But th thank you. Thanks so much for thinking of me. Let's see. Well, you... Oh, wait. Who... I was going to say, we should all go to bed, but you're ending your stream too. <laughs> um, no, it's, we will do it. We will raid somebody. Um, and I'll just tell them, oh, you're raiding anyway? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, thank you so much. You know what I'll do is I'll let me play this video for y'all, and I'll tell you what about. I'll tell you why this channel is. Uh, well, you're coming from very handsome Billy, so you're used to th a, a streamer that's different than most other music streamers. But let me play you something just so you get a sense of what I'm about, and then I'll tell you a little more that you might find interesting. Um, where is that video? This is me a long time ago. Well, not that long ago, but before life just battered my vocal cords. Here it is. Where is that video? It's very short. Don't worry, it's very short. Not a big investment of your time. About 70 seconds. I'm the Etc. Kid, and I host a live show on Twitch that's one of the most interactive experiences you'll find on the web. Normally, when you watch a concert, it's a pretty passive experience. But on this show, you actually can help shape the music we create, even if you have no musical background. Here's how it works. There's a live chat room, and before each song, you can request the sounds I use, and the speed, and the key of the music. And the drum beats for each song are generated from your usernames using software I wrote. I take the basic musical ingredients you give me, and layer by layer, turn them into something on the spot. Everything is completely improvised from scratch. Because I don't have anything planned in advance, no melodies, no chords, it means each request you make has a profound impact on the end result. And your requests make every song sound pretty different. As you watch these songs come into existence, you also get to help name them. Symphony of a Madman. Enigma has named our thousandth track on Twitch. That's what makes this show so different. You have a direct impact on your experience and your contributions are encouraged and celebrated by our amazing community. So please drop by, make a request, and become a part of our next song. Good night and good luck. I'll see you soon. <laughs> anyway, so to, I really need to make a new video because clearly I'm much older I mean, that was only three years ago, three or four years ago. But we're now at past 5,000 songs, I think. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, um, I'm an improviser like, like uh, uh, Very Handsome Billy. And um, um, y'all in chat, like I was saying, y'all help me make the music. Every song I started, I have no idea what I'm going to do, and I'm dependent on y'all's idea. You, you give me the sounds I have to use and... Y'all name the songs, so it's a real interactive experience, and um, um, our bot is pretty crazy. Y'all help write what the bot says, and 
It's a really, uh, yeah, my schedule right now is Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we, uh, the big, my big, big, big news, well, y'all probably heard me saying that, I guess, on, but I'll say it again, is that I'm planning on taking this show, condensing it down into a little tiny minivan and traveling around um, the uh, the country doing shows in the van and outside in front of, I don't know, um, the Grand Canyon or whatever, who knows. Uh, so if anyone's interested in van life, um, I'm still a ways away from it, but it, but we're talking a lot about that. and um, But we're gonna have a, a big show in December that's gonna be uh, celebrating my five plus years on Twitch, thousand plus shows. I have this huge secret project I've been working on. I put thousands of hours into it. Nobody knows what it is. I would be launching that. Uh, maybe debuting a new show I'm starting on YouTube, which is gonna be, it's sort of a combination of a uh, travel vlog and a variety show. Uh, I do more than just music. I've done a lot of improvised storytelling on uh, on on Twitch, and so this Friday show will be there'll be music stuff, there'll be storytelling, there'll be I also we have a game show that we do sometimes. This is called Badly Translated Game Show. That'll be part of this. Uh, so lots of exciting things coming up. But I would love to see as many of you as possible back during just a normal stream, and I can turn your name into a drum beat. Uh, you can help you know request these sounds and. Um, but thank, thank you, thanks to a uh, very handsome Billy for sending y'all over. Even though I'm just a boring talking head right now. <laughs> oh yeah, if you follow, if you follow now, you 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 get a download of today's show. I release every show as a live album. But what might be more interesting is the next show you come to, you'll also get a credit that you can use to get a download for that show. But um, yeah, uh, you know, every song, what's cool is every song has about anywhere from five to 20 different people who get credit on it, who have requested one of the sounds or their name was a drum beat or they chose the key or, um, and all, and you get credit, you know, or you name the song and uh, all these albums get released on Bandcamp and on YouTube. Oh, but I should ask, any, what was uh, what was y'all those anyone who's still here who came from the raid? Uh, what was your favorite favorite track that uh, or mashup that um, that Very Handsome Billy did today? Anyone have a favorite, a most memorable? And what was what's your favorite instrument that uh, Very Handsome Billy plays? Josie, you should travel, go travel with your little brother. Yeah, this, that sounds a lot of fun. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm most likely in a very, very tiny little vehicle, which everyone is. I know everyone thinks it's a terrible. I'm the only person who thinks it's a good idea. <laughs> and I may be convinced. I may be convinced that I need to get something bigger than I'm planning. But Glam Dream Girl, Glam Dream Girl says Billy Crush Electric Avenue. Oh, nice. L Spacer says Billy did a mean God only knows rendition and Black Hole Sun combine those two. Catherine, you like the bass? Ella, you like automaton? Susie Pig got the Thunder too? Oh the Sax Monica. What's wait, what's what's the Sax Monica thing? Is this a new instrument of Billy's? A sax monica? What's a sax monica? Oh, it's a real thing. Sounds like a sax, but fits in your pocket. Oh, I think I've I think I've seen these before. Hmm. 
I play um I play a soprano saxophone, um, which is sort of hard to see, but it's uh, it you know it's it looks more like a soprano looks more like a sax monica than 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 a alto would. But I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be downside. I got a lot of stuff. Obviously, I'm gonna most of that stuff I'm not gonna be bringing in my tiny little vehicle on the road. Durandos is a tiny trombone. Actually, we got a trombone in the background right now. With the, you know, the way I'm getting that sound is, I'm actually, I think I probably have a, the plunger. See that plunger right there? Right there? Um, the plunger, you can you, you get this wah-wah effect, right? But if you push the... <laughs> you use the plunger like a plunger, right? If you push it really tightly against the trombone and then you play as loud as you can, it gets this, this awesome, aggressive vibration. Uh, yeah, but trombone is, is, the, is the, the, the instrument I got the highest level at professionally long ago not now but but i'm not going to bring it it's not going to be space in the van no trombone no, not the baritone that's that tuba looking thing I'm just going to bring smaller instruments the rendos is trombone is the most drunk instrument absolutely yeah that's a great way of describing it it is a very and i i i emphasize that some trombone players uh just love to uh pretend like they're not playing a trombone like they really just want to be a saxophonist or trumpet player, which I get. I mean, I love saxophone and trumpet too. But, and what they do, you'll, they'll never use the slide, you know. So they'll articulate everything. Articulate is is a way you separate notes. So then, you know they'll they'll go. Whereas I want, I, you got to slide. So I'm gonna go do it. You got you got to use the slide. It's there. You know what would be fun is a saxophone with a slide. Oh, that would sound really cool. Because you get just get the blues there with that bending into the notes. Glam says, I'll need a sax monica now, yeah. That is a vuvuzela, yeah. Yeah, all those things you see I play on the show. Many of them not very well, but, you know. <laughs> Well, it's all in the ear of the beholder, right? I like to think that I make the best of my abilities in the context in which I use them. Mises, do famous trombone players have a plumber who does all the plunging for them? <laughs> the, you, you see in, in, um, in jazz, uh, jazz is mainly where you'll see lots of alterations to the trombone within the form of mutes, M-U-T-E. Um, you'll, uh, you'll have the plunger mute, uh, which is literally a plunger. Although you can buy, you know, designer plungers that aren't actually for toilets, but I always just, I mean, I use clean new ones. I don't use used ones, of course, but um, you have something called a, a straight mute. Uh, you have a cup mute, you have a hat. I've never used a hat, but it, it's literally, it looks like one of those those flat hats from the, I don't know, 1920s or something. Um, and then you have the Harmon mute, which I think sounds, I hate how it sounds on a trombone, but it sounds great, I think, on a trumpet. And if you've ever heard Miles Davis, you've probably heard the Harmon mute, if you've heard more than a few songs by Miles Davis. This is what this is what a Harmon mute looks like, but this is for a trumpet. And and Harmon mutes come with this uh, this thing that come, sticks in there that changes the sound. But nobody that I know uses that. Everyone takes that out and and loses it. I don't know where mine is. So this is Monica. Very yeah. I, the melodica, I, I, 
I never played until um, I, I unboxed it. I, did, I, I think I unboxed it on stream. It was three or four years ago. And it is one of my favorite discoveries. Uh, it's such a evocative... I'll play some melodic. I'll, I'll, I should play something for you all, right? I'll just I'll improvise some melodica for you quick. Where can I hear that music from? Where is that coming from? Where is that from? Can you still hear the background music? That wasn't playing during the, that promo video, was it? Now you can't hear it, okay. It wasn't it wasn't playing at the same time, was it? I could hear it, I was thinking, oh man, it's gonna sound horrible if you got two songs playing at the same time. Okay. I'll turn off my overhead. We'll actually turn on it. We'll turn on we'll get some reverb and make it sound legit. There it is, the melodica. Sally, you got Billy Melodica? Yeah. For me, the melodica, it's, it's something about it more than any of the other, other instruments I've ever played. I'm able to, I, I feel like it just, it, it, you can express the feeling of loneliness through it in a way that I can't on any other instrument. Not, not, I don't want it to sound like loneliness is this ever-present thing in, in, in my life. I mean, I think all of us, most of us feel loneliness in some way sometimes, right? Um, but uh, no other instrument am I able to get that feeling. Um, I, I, and I always, when I play it, it's, I always just feel like... Um, I mean, it's, you know, I, I think of an accordion, even though it's not an accordion, but there's similar instruments in terms of how they, the physics of them, right, how they function. I always just imagine um, 
a street musician. In, it's always a street musician on these cobblestone streets at night in some village, and the streets are empty, and it's just and it's dark, and this lonely street musician is walking uh, down the cobblestone streets playing this just haunting melodies. Music of Star Wars would be so much more compelling if Vader had a melodica for a respirator. <laughs> Quiver Fury says, go to bed. I know, I've been saying I was gonna, I needed to stop for two hours, and now two hours past my bedtime. The red nose says, don't go to bed. <laughs> Let's see. But yeah, we have uh, we have a, I think we have a really really nice community. Most of our community has probably gone to bed now, <laughs> but there's a few left. Um, real chill vibe here most of the time. The music is not always chill though, but it really depends. Oh, and thank you. Thanks, Blue. Thanks for gifting 10 subs. Sorry, I just saw that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, and, and Fantastic Plastics were here. I missed their message. Are they still here? They're another amazing streamer. I feel bad if they're gone. I would love to shout them out. If you haven't seen Fantastic Plastics, um, they are awesome, awesome, awesome duo. Um... Just the best, best vibe, energy. Let's see. Oh, and John Shimoni, are you still here? That was This was three hours ago, but John Shimoni named a sound The Hum. Let's see. Oh, and there were lots of followers. Let me shout y'all out. It looks like, or I don't know if these are people who wrote in chat. I'm not sure if they're followers, but I'll just shout them out. Angry Painter, Slayer, McCheesy, The Gross Padawan, uh, Josie Fenton, Paddywicks, Loki Shady, um, uh, Young Saucy, Tower Come In, Katie Oak, Danky Stanker, <laughs> Bright Yellow Daisies. Hey to Travoka 001, Magic Soup, Valley Vox Theater, Texas Lioness, Queen Moose Mouse, Ellie R Ella Rain, Susie Pink, Catherine Collins, Jean Pontramoli 83, Watcher, The Rendo, Buddy Lennox, Glamden Girl, Kane. Oh, and Buddy Scott works here too. I think I said everybody. Oh, thanks, Remaster One Up. Thanks for gifting a sub. Thank you. Oh, there is Fantastic Plastics. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah, so shout out for Fantastic Plastics. Oh, can, did I? I could do it. Let's see. Shout out Fantastic. Whoops. So... I, I I need to, I should end, but I will, since there's so many new people here. Um, I mean, I, I can't do any more. I can't do any. Doing music on this show is a huge, is a big production. <laughs> so I, it's, it's doing one song means basically extending the show for realistically 45 minutes to an hour. So I can't do that, but I will, I, I can't hang out a, I'll hang out a little bit longer. If any, if any new folks have any, any questions or comments, or uh, then, then I'll gladly stay online for a little bit longer. Otherwise, 
we'll probably start winding down. That's what makes Twitch unique, right? If you're watching, if you're watching, I don't know, any TV show, they're not going to extend the show because it's something you do. They don't even know that you're there. But on Twitch, oh, <laughs> thanks, Remaster One Up. Thank you. You'll be back, watcher. Awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to turn your name into a drumbeat. The Rendo says, extend the show, do music, the masses. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Brucos. Brucos gifted a sub to Fantastic Plastics. But yeah, we actually, the music show technically ended three hours ago, I think. And uh, we've mostly been just talking about my plan, you know, the van and all sorts of stuff related to that. Um... So, you're not complaining, music chick. Ghost Runner wants to love chill streams. You seem pretty chill. Thank you. I'm not always chill when I'm by myself. <laughs> uh, um, full disclosure, but but when I'm on the stream, most I don't know for regulars, am I am I mostly chill most of the time, except during the music. The music isn't always chill. Sometimes it's pretty not chill. But on stream, am I pretty chill most of the time? Is that a fair fair thing to say? Uh, the music says you're super chill. Boots is always chill. <laughs> y'all, 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 y'all seen a few shows where I've not, but you know, I mean, I'm I some I have bad days. Right? Y'all can tell when I'm not doing well, can't you? Or am I, am I, um, <laughs> is it hard to tell? <laughs> you see, I have rants. Yeah, I rant sometimes. Not as much as I used to, Music Chick. I, I, when, Music Chick had to listen to me rant about copyright so many times. I, I'm a much better about it. I don't do it very often anymore. Music Chick is even the rants are chill. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm sort of careful. I think I, if I'm going to be passionate about something, it's probably not going to be something that anyone's going to get offended by. <laughs> you know, um, I, I definitely have some opinions that that would offend people, and I, I generally keep those to myself. Ghostrunners is very stoic. Blues is unless we talk about music outside of the seventies. <laughs> That's gonna give people the wrong impression, Blue. I love music from all eras, and like I said earlier, there's no. I would. I I am glad I'm making music now. I wouldn't want to make music in the nineties, the eighties, the seventies, the sixties. I'm glad I'm here now. In this world, right now. Vuzis kid doesn't keep Kava. I know I, I still I still feel an obligation to respond in case someone else doesn't understand Kappa. Yeah, I, I'm horror I'm not good with sarcasm. I, I miss it most of the time. Um, is anyone else like that in chat? You have a hard time knowing people are being sarcastic? I, and I'm I'm almost never sarcastic, almost never. Off stream, it's just not it's just not my style, but it's just very counter to Twitch, right? Twitch is Twitch is Kappa Central. <laughs> and then you know, and, and then Muty's got the yes cap, and then Blue with no cap. My head is exploding trying to make sense of what that means. I I don't know. I do not know. <laughs> I don't know what it means. Music is your full of spice. I got some attitude. I save I save a lot of the rough edge. You know, the the corners, the sharp edges. I save that for the music. 
you know? I, sh I save the, uh, the extreme emotions for the music. Dorinda says, I'm British, so I excel in sarcasm. Y'all will see me metaphorically cry, scream, um, anger, the gamut of emotions I will express in my music. But a lot of the music tends to be chill, too. <laughs> but not always. Hello Space is cheeky sarcasm can be fun. Oh, and we now we got a raid from Nikki. Another amazing streamer. Thanks for the raid, Nikki. I'm just I was supposed to end three hours ago. I'm just I'm just hanging out. And I'm trying to end. <laughs> Oh, I don't know why. Yeah. Um, Nikki is a fantastic bass player. Fantastic bass player. Awesome stream. We've got, we got, we got, we've been rated by three bass players. Because uh, Music Chick plays bass and, and Very, Very Handsome Billy plays bass. Nikki says, oh, OMG, that's so funny. You're trying to end and people keep raiding you. You've, you've had that, ex that experience, right? That's, that's sort of a rite of passage as a Twitch streamer. Um, you know, back in the day, I would try to muster up the energy to play one more song. And I'm just too old now. I, I've played a thousand shows on Twitch, okay, everybody? I've played a, over a thousand. Oh, not quite. Almost a thousand shows. We're about four shows away from a thousand. Um, I have streamed an insane number of hours. Um, I just can't, I can't, I can't, I don't have it in me anymore. <laughs> well, there is a mechanism theoretically, but, but please don't use that mechanism, anybody, anyone that's here. <laughs> I'm saying now that I, I, even if you use that mechanism, it's not going to happen. I, I don't have anything left. Moose is Raid Robson or the Amazing COA. Well, if Robson, when I'm ready to raid, Robson plays bass, so it's only appropriate for me to raid Robson, right? We've got three raids from bass players. We should give the bass love to Robson. But CA in LA is, is amazing streamers also. So yeah, we'll, we're going to raid in just a moment. Unless, I mean, I've already, I'm already so past my bedtime. If, if, if anyone else has any questions or comments, you can extend this just a little longer, but I, I really should raid. Oh, thanks, Nikki. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I usually, it's rare that I, oh, the stop again. It's rare that I'm this late. So that's why we're getting, we're getting these, these raids from friends who, uh, it's just usually not convenient. But Nikki, I mean, some of y'all have heard me say this 10 times tonight. I'm sorry. But Nikki, if you haven't heard, my, my big plan is beginning sometime next year, which is not very far away. Uh, I'm going to be moving the show into a van, moving my whole life into a van so I can travel around the country doing, I'm going to keep doing the stream. Um, and... Uh, uh, So, yeah, I'm real excited about that. The Renders is when I used to go to nightclubs in Glasgow. Oh, what did, I missed it. already disappeared, the message. At the end of the night, when they turned the lights on, we used to want to kick us out. We would all chant one more tune and one more tune would happen. Oh, thanks, El Rain. Yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful to, I'm always, I'm always grateful for raids and, and 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 Billy was very, very kind. Luntrex's main instrument. Uh, 
Well, there's two ways to answer that question. I think from the point of view of watching this show, you would probably say keyboard because I'm going to do more of that than anything else. But I don't, in terms of my brain, I don't have a main instrument. I just, uh, someone asked earlier what my favorite instrument is, and my favorite instrument is whatever I'm playing at the moment. Um, but if I had to choose, if I could only do one thing, I would sing. Um, I, and the reason for that is, you know, the voice is, it's your body. It's, you can't get any closer to yourself than your own voice. Um, and so, but if I could do only two things, I'd play guitar. I don't play guitar though <laughs> on the show. I don't play guitar on the show. So, so, oh well. Um, but if I could play three things, I would also play a horn, which is, you know, and the reason for that is what I love about playing horns. Um, if I if I couldn't sing, if I could not sing, the one I would play a horn. That would be because the horn is powered by our breath. And it is such a, for me, it's, yeah. And, and, and one of the best pieces of advice I've ever heard for people who don't play a wind instrument, people who play bass or play piano or play um, guitar, is play it still as if you're singing or playing a wind instrument. And what does that mean? What do we as humans have to do? We have to breathe. And when we breathe, we can't make any noise or we can't sing a note at that very easily. I mean, there okay, there are some ways you can do that, but not really, right? Um, and uh, the risk as a piano player, a guitar player, a bass player, a cellist or a violinist is to never stop. But it's those moments when we stop, when we pause, when we wait to finish our thought, that puts people on the edge of their seat, that makes the thing you next say, next say, that's very eloquent, that you say next, really impactful. Boomer Basin says he will wander the earth like Kane streaming from a van. Sounds cool. So I'm going to keep streaming, and then the, and then the the big thing I'm the biggest probably the most ambitious thing I'm going to be doing is I'm starting a YouTube show, not a live show. Uh, and the the way I'm describing it is it's going to be a travel vlog meets variety show. Because uh, I do, I have a lot of interests outside of music. Um, some some folks here have seen me. I, I I haven't done it on Twitch in a while, but I've done a lot of improvised storytelling, where chat gives me a bunch of ingredients and I have to make up a story. Um, so there's going to be uh, storytelling part portions of this of the this new show on YouTube, and uh, there'll be music. There'll be um, my attempt my attempts at humor. <laughs> I don't. I do not have a lot of experience at actually trying to do humor, so that'll be interesting. It'll probably just be cringy, but you know, cringy can be enjoyable sometimes, right? I hope. Um, uh, game show element, all sorts of crazy things. Blue says, "Even big arena DJs know the power of some silence." The render says, "Stop collaborating, listen." Luna Trek says, I don't play any windows, I'm just play guitar, keys, and bass. Sith Vasquez says, you can't have music without silence. I've always experienced um, music as motion. Um, you know, I, I first, when I first started playing music, I played classical music, and I, you know, and, and I was the, I was the weirdo in the, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the orchestra and the band, I'm playing trombone and everyone else's people are very, tend to be, you know, not move a lot unless they're a soloist, you know, solo, but, but if you're just, and then I'm there with the trombone, just whipping around the whole time. I actually don't move as much now um, on this show as I would if I weren't doing everything. There's so many things I have to, as a solo performer, that I have to do so many things. I, I don't move as much as I would otherwise, but, but anyway, music is motion. 
And it is, it right? Sound waves are motion. Um, but in the same way that the analogy of silence and sound, you have stillness and motion. And those contrasts are so powerful. Because um, you, because you know, you think about that. It, what when when uh, Blue talked about the uh, you know the DJs in the stadium, when you have that silence, and you you know that kick drum's coming back, but you don't know when. That is an amazing feeling, right? Or you don't even know you don't know what's coming, but you know something's coming. And that moment when everyone stops, everyone has everyone stops dancing. That movement ends because the music, the, we have the silence. It's so powerful. Yeah, I have my archives are up on YouTube, and uh, and I have a, another channel on Twitch that's 24-7 music, because we've generated, I don't know, what, what have we figured, over a, how many hours of music? Over a thousand hours of music. Uh, original music and so it's 24 7 etc kid radio on twitch but i really recommend that if you want to experience what i do experience it live on stream first um that's to to really understand what this is is to see the way in which this what i do is truly de dependent a collaboration between me and you. Um, and I think it's a very different experience to hear something after it's been created, whereas usually almost all, you know, well, some of y'all are here from from Very Handsome Billy, so you, 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 you have a sense of, you know, what it's like to see music created spontaneously. But for people who don't, you know, it's, it really is what the music that is on the show is, I don't plan it, it's, 100% improvised and it grows entirely out of the requests that Jack gave me the analogy I like to give is um, you know or it's it's like if you've ever seen something like Iron Chef right if 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 you're given a bunch of ingredients you cannot come in with a preconceived plan if you come in and your plan is to make steak but then the ingredients you're given is just spinach celery and peppermint you cannot make a steak with that. And if you try to make a steak, you're trying to force something to happen that isn't meant to be. But if instead you say, okay, I've been given these ingredients, what do I do now? And that's what the experience of this channel is all about, is, um, you know, is, is that sense of discovery when you don't have control over everything. And for me, that's a... That's a such a fertile, vibrant, uh, creative space to be in, to not have control over everything, to try to, to be open-minded, to let things happen instead of trying to just force things to happen, which is so much what a life is many of us live like. I certainly try to force so much of my life to happen, force things to happen. But I know that I'm at my, my best when I let things happen. That doesn't mean you're being passive. That doesn't mean you're being passive to let things happen. Um, because you're still shaping how they happen. And it's Crook Brooks. Hey, Crook Brooks. Loses five billion hours. Oh, thanks, Nick. Thanks for saying that, Nikki. Hey, no fire. How are you doing? But, um, but, you know, the, 
that's you know a really important part of the way I see my expression, my art, what I create is is finding ways to involve other people, and um, and uh, and you know that's that's a core part of the whole concept of this show, but it's also going to be a significant part of this the YouTube thing I'm planning. Um, in a much broader way than just music. So if that intrigues you at all, the idea of being sort of having influence on a variety show, um, yeah, stick around. Even if you're not interested in the music, you might just watch out for that. It's going to be a different name. I'm not going to use ETC Kid, I don't think. But... Dennis Thick Wednesday said, love it when a deaf person comes up and grabs a sub and starts to dance, feels for real. Yeah, I played a show, um, a wedding reception, for a a couple who, who were hearing, but the, the woman taught at a, at a school for the deaf. And it was a really powerful experience as a musician to to see, to, to, to it opened, I think it opened me up to, to understanding music in a different way, uh, watching all of her students, how much they loved, uh, loved hearing us, even though they weren't hearing us. I was, uh, yeah, that was a long time ago. I was, I was at probably 20, and I'm 85 years old now, so. But I got our our robot, our channel's bot, uh, is 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 going to be on the road with me in the van. Um, probably a, an assorted set of other characters. Yes, Pencil Jackson, I am live. Um, no, I'm not eighty. <laughs> I'm not even close. Um, I, I've aged so much so in my years on Twitch. Much more. I looked. I looked. Uh, I was a fresh face, fresh faced baby when I started. Um, I'm staring at our robot. That's why I keep looking over here. Our robot has. You, you'll see. We have some emotes. You can see what a robot looks like. Our robot's as tall as I am. But it's it's a character. Uh, it's part of our channel and. Blues, his kid was born in the 1800s. When he says 70s, he means 1870s, yeah. No, I I just, I use this special lens that makes me look much younger. Um, I'm not kidding. <laughs> it is very soft focus, so, you know, all the the, the wrinkles, the just the, the, the trauma of life. You know how the trauma of life, it just, it just, just pulls your skin apart. It separates it. It turns it into a you know, like a relief map, you know, to Grand Canyon on your face. And this beautiful lens uh, just blends it all together. I don't know if I'm able to use this lens anymore in the van, though. Y'all might have to see the real me, because this lens, it's uh. I need a wider angle lens than this, I think. Well, no, I mean, this This is about as far away as I'll be able to get from the camera in the van. So, yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't think I'll be able to use this, this amazing lens anymore. It's very inexpensive lens. It's my secret sauce. I don't reveal what it is. <laughs> The Randall's his old face is like a map of their lives. Beauty says, Tubi's face is smooth. He's both, yeah, Tubi's face. Although, if you see Tubi up close, Tubi's our bot, a.k.a. to be or not to bot. And, uh, oh, I should turn, the, if I'm not ending, I should, oh, what am I doing? I, should, I really should end, but. Um, is that going to work? Um, yeah, 
If you see up close, Tubi is rough around the edges, like everything on this show, like me. Oh, uh, Pencil Jackson, I don't do reactions. Uh, sorry about that. But if you if you want to ask me off stream, you can send me a message on Discord direct. DM me on Discord, but I don't do as a, I don't do uh, reactions. Yeah, to be is theoretically there's no links, but I guess our bot is not active in chat. Well, it is, but it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Let me see. I wonder if that's just because that. I should just pull an all-nighter now, right? No, I need to stop soon. No, it's just Pencil Jackson. We don't do links because it's it's there's too many issues that come up with links, and normally they just get timed out. Yeah, it's not you. It's just it's just normally it just it just makes things too difficult. Unfortunately, I'm sure what you were asking was fine, um, but just as a, as a, you know, as a long term streamer, I learned pretty quick that links cause problems. But I would love to have you DM me with that, okay? Don't be dismayed. Send me a DM on and I'll check it out, whatever it is. Yeah. Any, any uh, last questions or comments? When there's a too long of a low, I start thinking I need to end the show, end the stream. So, y'all can distract me. I'm distractible. The rental says, "What is time?" I so I often get headaches if I don't get enough sleep. But at this point, it, it doesn't matter. Really, I'm gonna if I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it tomorrow. No other questions. Everyone's ready. Ready. Y'all are making me do the work. I've been streaming for. I'm. A, I've been online for nine hours. I, I don't have. I don't have anything left. I don't. I, I can't come up with anything to say. Y'all have to. Y'all have to. Y'all have to make make it happen. <laughs> Loses their reason. <laughs> Project X. Um, <laughs> yes, there is blue. Yes, there is. Blue is asking about this secret project I've I put thousands of hours into in the last couple of years. Um, the reason behind Project X. Well, I knew I was coming up on five years on Twitch. I knew I was coming up on a thousand shows and. Not that, like I said, not that those numbers mean anything to me, but, you know, that's a lot of time. It's a lot of doing similar things. Um, oh, just the X itself? It was just it was just arbitrary, because I just needed something to, to call it by. Yeah, there was no reason for it. Yeah. But what I was saying, I guess, is, yeah, there, I, I needed... Well, I can't say too much without revealing what the details. And I think it's going to, probably a lot of people are not going to understand why I did it the way I did it. And what it is, they might, it might not make sense, the, the process. But it was, it is the way I need to do it. I needed, I needed to be my own thing. Uh, I needed to be free from specific expectations. Um, but yeah, this secret thing will be uh, most likely and uh, almost certainly 
in December. I've been hit with a, a, a big roadblock on it actually in the last four or five days, but um, I think no matter, even if I'm not able to work around it, I'm gonna power through, we'll say that. <laughs> this is nine hours, yeah. Luna says, what was Twitch like five years ago for music? Um, there were very few streamers compared to now. Um, yeah, way fewer streamers. Um, I mean, I think that, you know, I think uh, the music category remains a, an amazing place, uh, you know, and it was an amazing place five years ago. Just, you know, a lot of the really rough stuff on Twitch just isn't as bad in the music category. Um, you know, for me personally, it, it's it been a challenge to deal with the exposed, the incredible growth um, because, you know, it's, it's a lot easier to do something different when there's no competition, you know. But um, although it's been not necessarily good for me, the I mean, the growth is extraordinary over the last five years. It's, you know, you would be on the front page, that you'd be in the first five rows with 20 viewers five years ago. Um, but though it's not been the best situation for me, the change, I still am so glad that the, what's happened has happened is because it's meant so many more people get to play music, so many more people get to uh, share what they do, and especially with the pandemic, um, you know, it, it, it destroyed live music. And so I'm, I'm really glad on a community level that, um, that we've had this incredible growth. But I will say that it was much easier to start out five years ago than it would be now. <laughs> <laughs> much easier. It was much easier to start two years ago than it is now. But if any of you are listening and are and that's, I don't want to discourage you. But um, the, you know, and you never know. You know, you never know. It's still possible, I think, on Twitch for somebody to just to be discovered and 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 do really well right away. Um, but. The conventional wisdom at this point, not just in music, but in any category on Twitch, is that the if you want to do well on Twitch, you have to do well outside of Twitch. You have to have a presence on YouTube or some other social media platform because discoverability on Twitch is, is non-existent almost. Unless, you know, discoverability is great if you're at the top of the category, but if you're not, it's, it's a challenge. Um, so, so for me, that's one of the reasons I'm really, YouTube is going to be my big push next year, which, well, that sounds far away, but you know, uh, but I'm, I love, I love streaming. I love live. I love doing the live interaction and, and, uh, um, I, 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 if I can, I know that I'll want to do live streaming the rest of my life in some form. Might not be music, it might be storytelling, or maybe I'll paint. I don't paint, but I might. Or it'll be just hanging out. Um, you know, this the YouTube thing I've got planned, I'm excited about it, but I don't know that I'll ever love production, trying to, you know, produce things off screen and then share it. I don't know that I'll ever love that as much as improv and live. Um, this is this is a natural thing for me. Uh, it being in the moment, uh, where the means and the ends are perfectly aligned. That's why I love improv so much. Is the means and the ends are exactly the same. There's no difference between them. Uh, if I 
if it takes me 10 minutes to improvise a song, I end up with a 10 minute song at the end, right? It was ten, it's exactly the same. Anyone who's made, who's tried to write a story or write a song or, you know, that song might be three minutes, but you might've put a hundred hours into it, right? Or a short story, you put a thousand hours into that story and it takes someone five minutes to read it. Um, but I like experiencing what I'm making at the, at the same time. That's my most natural way of creating. But, you know, I have done more traditional, you know, composition and production in the past. And, and you know, I need, to, I, should, I need to grow and challenge myself, right? Put myself in a situation that is not as natural. Let's see what happens. The Reno says, I was sold when you said you turn people into drum beats. Nerve says, until I get that, I really vibe off and improv myself. I love being able to interact with people while doing my games. Oh, thanks, Nerf Dermot. Thanks for gifting that sub to the rendo. Anytime I pause, know that I'm thinking I need I should end the show. So <laughs> the longer that pause happens, the the more I get so if you want to keep it going, you gotta distract me. But I'm gonna take I'm gonna start taking some more steps. Let's see. Is, is Robson still playing? Is Robson still live? He is. Okay. Well, assuming he stays live when I actually do end. Wow, it's... Oh, man. Yeah. Nervous as I end up falling asleep around two, just woke up. Super glad to hear Philly rated, yeah. We had three rays. We had um, uh, Nikki Tedesco, uh, Music Chick, and Billy. Three bass players. We're going to rate a bass player now. I do not play bass. I mean, I play keyboard bass, but that's not the same, right? Any bass player would tell you keyboard bass is not the same. <laughs> hey, Strawberry Midnight, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ending. I've been, I've been live for nine hours or so. Lunatrix said, cheers, get the natural vibe streaming, and YouTube do a mix of work production. It's not as fun for me. Thanks for streaming. Yeah, thanks for being here. Doug, is this going to be one of those 14 hour streams? No, we're, we're ending. We're ending. We're going to do this. Music, use some keyboard bass. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm, I'm never a purist when it comes to music. I mean, I think there's so many different ways to do things. Um, and there are times when keyboard bass is awesome. There's times when electric bass is awesome. There's times when uh, acoustic bass is awesome. There's times when there's no bass and it's awesome. Um, we're, we're very fortunate that there's an infinite number of combinations in music and an infinite that none of us will ever experience because it's going to happen after we're dead. Not to that sounds sort of depressing, but to me, that's a cool thing. It's cool that, that, you know, we're, we're, we're just getting this one little segment but I like I like imagining that all the stuff that will happen later. You know? I like that. I like that life goes on. I like that people will keep creating, doing new and crazy things. I like thinking about there's there's aliens out there making music probably, you know? Almost certainly. We'll pro I'll never see them. I'll never hear their music most likely, but I love that that they're out there. <laughs> 
um, probably so far away that the beam from their sun will never even reach us ever let alone their music but it's still being made somewhere did i actually paste my link in i hope i did i did okay um yeah that was great to see you music chick ella ray you've already heard music alien, alien music if you have any recordings please dm me <laughs> okay i want to hear it um yeah thanks everybody we we will do a raid and i'm gonna i'm gonna thank robson tell him i gotta go straight to bed um but i hope to see y'all i'll be back thursday friday saturday next week um and i hope to see as many of you new folks as possible and and old folks always <laughs> um but yeah thanks thanks so much everybody and um yeah i'll see y'all soon have a wonderful whatever comes next let's do it okay we're gonna raid robson broy awesome bass player awesome dude okay see y'all take care <laughs>